Welcome to another day of the ASL. I am Nyokin, and joining me today is Gypsy. So what's going on, Mihai? Yo, what's up? I'm so excited, dude. I thought for a second, I thought I was home free with this casting business. BSL was over, but then you roped me back in, Nai. And now, here I am, from BSL to ASL. Now here you are. You know, a lot of yeah. people requested you when they were finding out that Scan was going to be playing in Group D. And oh, we've yeah. got killer TVPs today. It is going to be Scan going up against Snow in our first matchup. And then we've got Shuttle versus Sock. So we do have interviews with Snow and Scan right now, but of course, neither of us speak Korean. I'm learning, but I am, I'm not there quite yet, so... I guess we're just gonna yeah. talk a little bit about uh, anything, really. If I notice a question that I understand, I'll mention it on stream, but I think that's not gonna happen. Well, you know, here uh, the lady's asking Snow, how do you think you're gonna do today? And he's like, well, I'm Snow. I mean, I almost won this ASL multiple times, so now I'm gonna smack this guy. And we'll have to wait to see what Scan has to say in response. 
You can see Scan's pretty mad right now. I can't believe that guy just talked crap like that to me. But yeah, I mean, this is going to be a sick matchup. I know Scan's really good, and uh, this might be, hopefully, his uh, breakout tournament, but <laughs> when your first game is against someone like Snow, especially in PvT, that's going to be really difficult. Yeah, so earlier on in the tournament, we had interviews with some of the lesser-known pros, and they were saying that there is still a massive gap between the lower tier and the top tier. So yeah. Snow is, of course, arguably either top one or top two Protoss player in the world. So it's going to be very hard for, for Scan here, but I was talking to him before the tournament started, and he told me that he practiced a ton of of TVP before these matches started. Let me read off the players that he mentioned to me. He said he played 100 practice games versus Kala, Piano, Motive, Ya Boy Ample, Ruin, and Sin. So he's been playing a lot, a lot of TVP, a little bit of TVT, and hopefully he makes it out. Yeah, I mean, that's, uh, that's an impressive lineup of people to play against, and that's probably what he's saying right now. You know, I just practiced with some same players, I'm in my top form. Snow, you ain't crap. I'm I'm coming for you. Is that so, what he's saying? That's exactly what he said, Naokin. And uh, I love the confidence from Scan. I mean, just look at his power posture. And you can see Snow is a bit intimidated. So, I mean, yeah, I, you know, I have been, I've seen Scan play TVP. I, I actually really like how he plays TVP in general. Uh, he, he's just so strong in the matchup. And obviously, even his TVT is is really amazing. I mean, I, I had the chance to play him uh, not too long ago, actually, while he was uh, coaching uh, Artosis. And he was just so strong in that matchup as well. So we'll have to see. You know, it's... I mean, he has Snow to play against here. And I know we have a bit of a, 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 a caster bias for a scan because, of course, he also has been casting ASL with you, Nyokin, so obviously we want him to do well. But besides Snow, I mean, there's Shuttle and Sock in his group, so, you know, honestly, even if he goes down here, I feel like he has a good shot of getting out. If he takes down Snow, I think he could make it out in first place because the, yeah. my opinion is that there's a bit of a drop-off in the players after Snow. Shuttle's very good, but I've never really been the biggest fan of Shuttle, and Sock, even though... He's very good TVT from what I've heard. I'm not too sure about his TVP. So I yeah. think if if Scan wins here, then there's a real chance that he just goes out in first place. Kind of like yesterday where JYJ, once he beat Action, it was like, well, yeah. this guy looks really strong. There's a real shot that he might just go the distance, and that's what he did. He absolutely crushed Best. And that was on, I think, Ultimate Stream yesterday. And that yeah. looked like a very, very favorable Terran map. I've never played it, but just simply looking at how the map was laid out, Terran can get three bases instantly. They can get five bases with all gas pretty easily. They have high ground everywhere. So if I was Scan in this scenario, I would be picking that map if I have the opportunity. Yeah, as far as I'm aware, Naokin, and maybe you can uh, clarify this, uh, the first games are going to be on Eclipse. And then... Oh. Oh, he's speaking in English. Yeah. Damn. So you see Scan's just... Uh, he's flexing that English right there. And, you know, both the... the I mean, the interviewer lady and even Snow, they're like, Oh my God, you speak... English so fluently. That's amazing. That's exactly what they're saying right now. Oh, see, he's even translating on the spot for them. <laughs> what an absolute chad, dude. This guy can do it all. He casts, plays, plays, uh, translates. I mean, what a power play. I'm, I'm trying to listen to uh, what he's saying. but uh, I, I wonder what Snow's going to say because I don't think he's responded yet. Oh my god, Scan, I can't believe. Oh, I thought I thought he would respond in English because actually, you guys, um, the games that I've casted for StarCast TV have, most of, or a lot of them have been Snow that I've casted and Rush in particular. And Cruiser is close with Snow and Rush and he showed him some of 
not just my cast, but other StarCast TV cast. And Snow really does like the English cast. He's really appreciative, appreciative of all the casters on StarCast. So, uh, yeah, I, I, would... I mean, I, I do want to point that out. Like, Snow is kind of a superhuman in that regard where he really cares about the scene. He's kind of like a StarCraft activist, right? Like, he, he goes... Th I, I remember he had this... Um, what was it like this this show where he went and interviewed a bunch of different uh players and amateurs and he obviously tries to oh my god that transition was really fast yes. but he <laughs> but he tries to like you know i remember the for, the first foreign versus all-star match um korean all-star match where snow got together this group of Korean amateur StarCraft players to play, so he's always trying to promote kind of like amateur StarCraft. I think he's really invested in just having a healthy scene, and he's aware that there's obviously the foreign scene, and that there's a lot of English-speaking fans as well, so that's really cool to see from him. Yeah, Snow's great. As you mentioned, he's made he made his own team, right? He made that Postus team that you even played against. You played one of the Protoss players, and I remember you Given that Protoss player a bit of a bashing. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, he, he's definitely supporting the amateur scene. He's been coaching a bunch of players, boosted their skills quite a bit. Uh, if you remember, back in that series, we had DeWalt actually kind of crush through one of the Postus All-Stars and uh, the Terran player that they threw at us. But yeah, yeah, Snow is. Snow is great, and he's great for the scene. I know he makes a bunch of content that's not just specifically him streaming. You know, he does, like, mukbang, I think. He's done interviews with... Uh, I'm not sure exactly who he interviewed, but he's been doing a lot of interviews on his uh, YouTube. So definitely yeah. check him out. Now, of course, we're into an uh, interview with Shuttle and Sock now. What are your thoughts on, on Shuttle and Sock here? Who do you favor uh, a little bit in this particular matchup? Oh, uh, 100% it's got to be Shuttle. Um, I mean, Shuttle's actually no joke, man. Like, especially if he's in the top form. Sock, also... A really strong player but i definitely do think that shuttle is kind of a a tier above him in in like absolute form you know so i'm interested to see here i mean shuttle is an asl champ you know we've got to remember that yeah he's one of the early asl champions and <laughs> he's the first asl champ now. Yeah, he is the first one and i i agree that shuttle is very good and I know that when he came back, he just grinded so much, and his skill improved quite a bit. But I still think he's a tier below Snow. So if we uh, expect certain players to get out, I, of course, am going to favor Snow a little bit. But really, Shuttle is no joke. Now, as far as Sock, I feel like I didn't watch many games of him when he was on SK Telecom. So I'm not too sure of his ability. I, for some reason, what keeps coming into my mind is we know everybody, or everybody knows that Flash is the one that kind of revolutionized 111, but I remember him mentioning that he's actually not the one that invented it. He just kind of optimized it. And I feel like Sock is the one that came up with the 111. Well, you know who actually came up with the 111? Oh, hit me with it. It was... It was, well, I mean, legend has it, of course. This is foretold in Terran folklore. But I think it was I Love Oof and Boxer, right? Or maybe just I Love Oof. Like, that was his uh, love child. And then, like, he co- Like, because, of course, at that time... I mean, in SKT, I Love Oof, right? Legendary Terran. Uh, transitioned kind of later on and took more of that coaching role. And, you know, obviously, he was coaching Sock. So, I mean... That's that's my understanding of where the 111 actually originated from. But Sock was kind of like one of the first, if not the first, Terran to kind of really whip it out. And it was his uh, his go-to in TBZ. Yeah, I think you're right there that I Love OOV is most likely the one that innovated it. Because everybody, uh, or in, in, the, in the past, everybody knows that Fantasy was the all-star of SK Telecom. But Fantasy got most of his actual strategies from I Love OOV. He was the mastermind behind that. So yeah. as far as TVP goes, not too sure what to expect from Sock. I'm, I kind of feel like since he was on SK Telecom and because he, as we were mentioning, played 111, he may be somebody that likes to harass quite a bit. And that could be good versus someone like Shuttle. 
Uh, I'm not too sure, yeah. of course, because I haven't seen much of his TVP. But I know that Shuttle, for sure, likes carriers, because when I played him on the ladder, every single time we played, he ended up going for carriers. Not necessarily two base carrier, but he definitely preferred the carriers over the Arbiters. So, Shuttle is the Korean Bonneth confirmed. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, we'll have to see. Like, you know what? I'll say this. I feel like if Scan were to play any of these two, he's almost, he's got to be favored, right? I mean, Shuttle is really good, man. That's the thing. Shuttle is a really good player, in my opinion. I mean, I think he's he's se severely underrated, especially if, he's, if he plays a lot. He can be an absolute menace. An absolute menace. So, we'll have to see what his form is like today. Now, obviously... The first map is going to be an eclipse for all these guys, so that's you know. What do you think about that map specifically, PVT? Well, it depends on what MMR I'm playing. The lower yeah. the MMR, the more I like it. The higher the <laughs> MMR and the better the Zealot Micro, the more I hate it because the game can snowball very quickly. Whether it's just a forward gate outside their base, whether it's a gate inside your base or just outside your base, I have a really tough time dealing with the Zealot. And behind it, a lot of times, the Protoss player doesn't even go for a Goon follow-up. They just go for, like, a Nexus. So they can even start snowballing the game harder. So for yeah. me, this is a very tough map unless I get my wall up and they don't harass it at all. Well, the interview finished. And now we're going to, uh, you know, watch the player sit down next to their PC. And you know what's exciting about this part, Nyokin? Is that we actually get to see what their choice of music is. That's right. We are they gonna have that <laughs> intro music? I I don't know. I I wonder actually. Um, oh yeah, that's true. That's that. This is so cool, man. I can't believe that we have our own feed here in Iowa. That basically, I was expecting to actually hear the um, the casters in the background, but uh, really, that's just us. Yeah, that's me in the middle. <laughs> that's you in and, the middle. Uh, okay, yeah, you're okay, the, you... the two on the sides. You're Kim um, Carrier. <laughs> I'm Kim Carrier. Oh, there's no Kim Carrier. I mean, into okay. the... <laughs> uh, okay, thank you. I was about to get tilted. <laughs> if you don't know who the guy on the left is, that is oh, yeah. in, Into the Rain, one of the very old school Protoss players. All of you guys that hate shuttle bombing and hate shuttle harassment, send your hate mail to that guy on the left because that's the guy that innovated back in the Lost Temple days. And then kind of the yeah. one that perfected it was Into the Rainbow. But yeah, you can blame him for all the Reaver shenanigans. For from into the rain to into the rainbow, dude was into the rain like the. Uh, what is that story behind? They're both Protoss players too, right? You think was into the rainbow like coached by him or something? I I have no idea actually. I'm I'm pretty sure that he just saw into the rain and he was like, hmm, that was probably a good name. And he probably found yeah. that wow, rainbow's another <laughs> another word. I'll just use that. I, actually, I'll tell you a story. Back when the boy oh, yeah. was a very good player back in the game night days. My game my yeah, ID. He was a Zerg player? He was a Zerg player, and back then I was a yeah. Zerg player, but I was switching to Terran. So I actually yeah. made my ID the next boy. So I'm pretty sure <laughs> I'm pretty sure Into the Rainbow just added the bow to it, and that's how he got his ID. That's really lame. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you know, back in the um, That's funny, man, because you remember in the Icy Cub days when I joined, well, let, let me tell you my, the, the list of my IDs, the rundown of the IDs, okay? My first first ever ID on Bnet, first ever, man. I'm talking about this was when I was a, a little boy, speaking about boys. Uh, it was Mike underscore the Zealot. Mike underscore the Zealot? But your name isn't even Mike. Anyway, and then... <laughs> I can't look at this song. Oh, he's got Circle of Life as his. <laughs> oh, this is amazing. What a legend. I'm trying to see if it, this is in English or is this the Korean version? What do you mean? They, they don't even sing in English, well, dude. Actually, a lot of uh, Korean YouTubers cover English songs, so I was wondering. But anyways, we did get to see the statistics of Snow there. You can see that he's got about a 60% win rate across the board. His PVT is 
really, really dangerous. No. Meanwhile, we've got our boy Scan in Group D. You can see that he doesn't have much experience in ASL because this is the first time he's qualified. You can see who yeah. he went through to make it in. I'm trying to read. Oh, in the finals, he beat Zealot two to one. Yeah. Park Park yeah. Park Jun Oh in the round of eight. That is killer. So so far, I see a lot of Terran Zerg, Terran versus Zerg for him. Yeah, I mean, Scan overall, I feel like he's just uh, a really strong player. Like, he doesn't really have a weak matchup. Um, so, we'll have to see here, though, up against Snow, it is going to be hard. Obviously, his uh, experience is a bit lacking <laughs> compared to someone like Snow, but that doesn't mean that he can't do well here. So, definitely, I mean, I'm excited to see this game. This is going to be on Eclipse. Yeah, this and, is, uh, is going to be great. And I do want to point out that because this is scan's first asl you always got to start thinking about whether he's nervous or nerves gonna affect him but before we get into that let's just get straight into the game man first game is going to be snow versus scan map is going to be eclipse let's see if let's see if our boy scan can take down one of the strongest protos players in the world right now Okay, in the top right, in the yellow, it is our Protoss player, Snow. And in the bottom left, in that race car red, it is Scan. Alright, so PVT on Eclipse, as I was mentioning earlier, Zealot Harassment, an absolute nightmare for Terran players. If you are a Terran player in the chat right now, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But for now, looks like we've got an honorable Protoss because I don't see a probe moving out for a forward pylon. I don't see a proxy pylon, so everything so far is pretty much as ideal yeah. as it's going to get for Terran. Yeah, and that's surprising. I mean, we'll have to see because I think the probe, if you uh, if you went just now, you can make it in time for a gas steal. But it looks like Snow's just going to build inside his base and not even push the probe out. So on a two-player map like Eclipse, gas steal is, is, is a go-to, but I mean, every Terran player at a high level will be used to dealing with a gas deal even dealing with a proxy gate and what's nice about this bottom left position as Taren is that you can have that big wall with the racks and the double depots to the right side there and that essentially sec it. like it basically cuts your main in half look at this mihai i knew it as soon as i saw that pylon yeah. and he wasn't going for proxy zealot i knew yeah. it was going to be a 12 nexus and that's exactly what it is now for you, for you guys out there that watched my stream about maybe a month and a half ago, I also played Snow on ladder. And let me tell you what he did after he went 12 Nexus. Uh, well, he built four robotics and built about 100 Reavers and dropped them in my main and I just died. Now, of course, that's not what's going to happen here. But I wonder <laughs> what his transition is going to be because he can pull out all types of stuff. Everybody knows that he loves Reavers, he loves Carriers, and if he does end up going into those powerful Carriers, this should allow him to just get into it that much easier. Well, you know what's funny about that is <laughs> then I also played Snow on the Ladder on uh, Ringing Bloom, and uh, he went 12 Nexus and just went into Mass Goon Man and just killed me with Goons. So that was embarrassing. But yeah, 12 <laughs> Nexus on this map. Also, this probe is going to make is going to buy him so much time because he can actually just moving shot this SCV. So if he uh, completely denies scouting here, that would be incredible. Obviously, Scan isn't going to lose the SCV. And there's a couple things you can do in this situation. You can kind of like uh, uh, bring the SCV back and block the probe a bit and then uh, move out, out of range of the attack. Oh my gosh. But, you know, on Eclipse, it's just so hard because the rush distances are actually quite significant so even if he scouts this 12 nexus it's not clear whether or not you should go for the bunker rush yeah but i want to point this out is that this probe not only does it deny scouting scan approached almost 300 minerals before putting down his factory so this factory is a 245 factory and if a factory doesn't get delayed at all it can go down as fast as something like 235 234 on this particular map so a 10 second gain simply because he was microing that SCV and not paying attention to his factory. And now he sees that the Nexus is up. And I can tell you, he is not happy at all. Oh, he's definitely not happy here. And he's going to push out with the two Marines, but already double gate is done. And you can see there's really no time. I mean, he could still pull a couple of SCVs here, but 
I mean, Snow's gonna have double zealots to work, and then uh, the cyber core is already finished. Now, if you're basically if you're in Scan's position here, you're you're hoping that's double zealot coming from the gateways because if Snow actually skipped both those zealots and went straight, okay, one zealot is out at least. If you went straight into dragoons, he would be so far ahead. Scan's gonna have to expand, but you know what's nice? At least Scan went for that factory first. This is a factory expand, of course, so. Not the Rax expand, and with the factory expand, you can get Vulture Mines out really quickly. And what's uh, what that's nice against 12 Nexus because 12 Nexus has a delayed robo. Yeah, what I'm wondering is what he's going to go for because once you reach a certain level, there's a lot of mind games that go on. And generally, Vulture play is the opener versus a 12 Nexus. However, if that probe gets cleared out by whether it's Marines or a single Vulture, Terran could just go straight into tanks. And Protoss may feel like, oh, he built the Vulture, or I know he should have a Vulture, so I'm not even going to move out at all with my Goons or a Zealot. And really, maybe Scan's upgrading something like Siege here. I mean, that's very unlikely since he doesn't have a second factory. But I have seen players like Rush, where even though Vulture is a very common follow-up, he ends up going into tanks, and it kind of catches Protoss off guard because they're not expecting you to have that many tanks. Now, we see that Scan is going for a Starport play, and this is kind of one of those plays where it either does damage or you're pretty much dead, especially versus a 12 Nexus, because this is such a costly investment for the Terran player. Yeah, but at the same time, oh, okay, speed. actually, he went Vulture Speed first. He's going to go in here. This definitely caught Snow off guard a bit, but, I mean, Snow is just so clean. He has the Dragoon up on the ramp. Three probe kills already. That's actually significant. You know, that, that could have even... Almost, well, I don't think it evened out the worker count, but three probes is definitely nothing to scoff at, especially after this really fast expansion from Scan. So that's a good move. And now he's going to have a couple a couple more vultures. The drop is going to come out. It is hard as Protoss to just move out. You know what's, what feels bad about going uh, vulture speed first is that you don't have mines to really spread. Oh my god, the double vultures are going to sneak into the main base of snow. One vulture inside the main one vulture at the natural he's gonna kill some more probes and honestly with this run by he's definitely ahead yeah this was exactly what scan needed to get back into this game i think probably the probe count to the scv count is very even at this point now if snow is really on top of his game he should know that hey there's no way you should ever have mines and speed already well of course now it kicked in but after the initial move out i thought for sure that Snow would send a couple of goons across the map because there's no way that Scan would have had mines in time. And he could have pressured that bunker, so a little bit of a missed opportunity. Now, this is a very greedy follow-up from Snow. Of course, he can get away with it because there's no way Terran has a lot of tanks behind this. Really, he can only have, like, one or two. So he goes for that third Nexus, but that means that there's more than likely not a fast Reaver for Snow. Oh, okay, yeah, observatory for him. So no fast Reaver, that means that he can't really punish Scan uh, at his natural or main, he's just instead going to try and power up with a third base. Man, I love how Snow or uh, Scan is playing this game. He's just been making vultures nonstop, and you know this is really—he's actually totally punishing this twelve nexus because as twelve with 12, twelve nexus, you're actually quite passive as Protoss, and it just seems like Snow has never had the opportunity to put on any pressure, and he's just getting all his economy sniped repeatedly. A drop goes in one. Vulture at the natural. Three more vultures are going to go in the main. And actually just two. The oh. drop does go down. But he's killing some more probes here. And this is some significant damage. Yeah, he's going to get some more probes. And there was no uh, pylon block at the top right corner. So he gets like six or seven more kills onto the probe line. Meanwhile, a couple more probe kills went down at the natural. Now, a lot of players behind this would just go straight into five factory after they've dealt all that damage. But because this is a 12 nexus... Scan probably is not too sure where he actually stands in this game. But what I do like is he scanned the entire main, saw there was no support bay. But smartly from Snow, he puts it at the third base. And I don't know if Scan is going to realize that, hey, this guy actually has Reaver play coming in. And he may be caught off guard in the next couple minutes. And there is the third and fourth factory coming up. Yeah, I'm looking at this game state here. And it's kind of hard to tell exactly where scan is i mean he killed so many probes where he you know you would say economically he he definitely evened out the disadvantage that you get uh going up against 12 nexus but at the same time 
The factory was non-stop making vultures. The starport made a dropship that died. Everything, all his units that he made this game died to keep the Protoss economy in check. Meanwhile, Snow, despite the fact that he did lose a bunch of probes, he did get his third base up. And now he has three triple nexus to replenish his probe count. And he's adding his gateway. So it looks like from what we're seeing here, there is four factories for scan. He does have an armory though, so he could still uh, get a command center here. The only drawback from getting a command center here is that actually his upgrade or his upgrades are a bit slow this game. And even if you, yeah, well, that is going to be a command center. And even if you get a later third in this oh, matchup, no. it's totally fine. There's an opening at the natural. No reaction from Snow. Luckily, that goon comes down and he has a couple more goons at his natural. But this vulture harassment has dealt so much damage. Pretty sure that those vultures used all their minds too. So they don't really need... Uh, it's not like a big f deal that Scan just loses them. Now, however, I do want to point out he has lost a lot of Vultures overall in this game. Yeah. And you can see Supply is in favor of Snow, but it's not some crazy amount like up 50 Supply. Because of all those probe kills, he has kept it kind of in check. If you're only down 20 at this point, that's, a not, that's not a bad position. Now, we did get a look into Snow's main, and that was a Citadel. So that means that there is not going to be super fast carriers anytime soon. Okay, maybe not. There is a Ooh. Stargate that went down at the top middle. I'm curious yeah, if, there's, definitely... if there's an archive too. <laughs> that definitely looks like a Stargate unless you put a gateway up in that northern section. But for sure, it looks like it's going to be Arbiters here. And I was going to say, you know, I'm interested to see how Snow's going to uh, approach this game, whether he's going to go for a gateway man or actually tech the Arbiters. He does have a group of goons here supported by the shuttle with speed that just finished. So a couple of Reavers in that shuttle without a doubt. There is a Wraith inside of Scan's base, and, you know, Scan's playing beautifully this game. I, I Just everything about how he's played has been immaculate, to say the least. Uh, so, you know, it's just so hard going up against that 12 Nexus that Snow... Like, honestly, Scan's just been all over Snow, but it, it is quite even here. More Vultures coming in. The Dragoons get into position, though, and uh, that run by was stopped, but... You know, so far, it's looking pretty good for Scan, but it is going to be hard for him to establish this third base. Yeah, I actually think that it was very nice that he ended up getting stopped there because I think for sure Snow's going to go for it if he loses those five vultures because it'd be like, dude, I've killed like 15 to 60 vultures at this point. Can you really have that much stuff behind this? I wouldn't have been surprised if he just instantly went for a bust. Now, that's a bit of unluckiness right there because the Nexus does not get denied by that mine. But this is going to be annoying. How do you get your third base? He's going to slowly siege up there. But this, you know, Snow is just going to, you know, unload an inch behind it and make it super annoying. Goons are sitting on the high ground too. So this is delaying that third gas that the Terran desperately needs for a very, very long time. Meanwhile, fourth base is going up for, for Snow. Luckily for Scan, though, this is Eclipse where you can split the map. It's not like Protoss is going to have, you know, 20 bases on Polyport or something. So at least he's got that going for him despite taking such a slow third base. Yeah, but what's important here is Terran is to, to just not lose your cool. Take your time taking this base. You do have upgrades to to hinge on, right? Like upgrades are just the great equalizer in this matchup. That's why Protoss doesn't just get away with murder, is that eventually they have to fight that 2-1, that 3-2, uh, which is so incredibly oppressive. So even as Terran, you might feel, okay, well, actually, here comes a shuttle bomb. Nice unsiege there, but Snow does snipe one tank. And then, oh, it's just so hard to get this third base, man. As Snow's buying so much time. Yeah, this is pretty much just what Snow does. He's got the best Reaver control in the world. I mean, he's not even flaunting it right now. He's kind of just sitting there with the Reavers, and it's enough. Now, that Cybernetics is spinning, so that means it's going to be weapon damage for the air. And there is going to be a carrier follow-up at some point. I doubt this is going to be plus three weapon for Arbiter, so that would be uh, a bit shocking. There's that Reaver shot, takes out another tank. Sure, he took a bit of damage there. Oh, we might lose that shuttle, and that did have Zealots inside of it, so it's not an inconsequential loss for him. However, up 50 supply now with four bases versus just two. Dude, was that, was that Stargate blinking? Yeah, this should be an Arbiter. Okay, okay. I was going to say, like, this Arbiter, it does seem quite late, actually, so... Uh, that's an upside oh. for Scan. Oh my god, that one Reaver just goes instantly down. And it looks like Scan's going to be able to... Okay, there goes the Arbiter. Scan's going to be able to get He's this third bus. base, but it really was late. And now it looks like Snow's getting into position. 
okay, the shuttle goes down. The reaver wow. does go down as well. Yeah, but that's so many units. Oh, look at that zealot from the top coming in so, so fast. Speedy guns lost. Now the shuttle dropping on top of the tanks in the back. And there's no vulture support really back here. I think that scan might end up just getting busted. Zealots flooding into the left side. Meanwhile, those goons are focusing the command center. And if that command oh, center no. goes da down, that base is or this this game is kind of down the drain and you know what i'm really really disliking me is those vultures on the right side you can see that at the mini map bottom right those are yeah. all vultures those five that tried to run by just sitting there dead supply for scan now he yeah, realizes it's so unfortunate uh, so unfortunate because those extra vultures could have made the difference there but okay they're gonna try and run in here but the zealot just blocks them from getting in and with the Arbiter out, I mean, Scan's going to be really disappointed to see that because now he has to deal with late game Protoss. And the thing is, you know, I mean, upgrades are good, but once, uh, you know, if Protoss is given time to just bank up Arbiters and bank up energy uh, and sit on a couple bases and, and bank up a bank, for lack of a better words, it is hard even with upgrades. So Snow doing what he needs to do here to handicap the Terran before getting into that 2-1, into that 3-2. Definitely getting a huge advantage by sniping that one command center. And now the Arbiter is just kind of chilling over the Terran's army, flexing, almost a psychological move there from Snow. And, you know, most likely he has stasis already. Maybe he's waiting for an ar for a recall, but this attack here is going to be so hard to deal with. Now he's just waiting for critical mass of Protoss. He does have the energy. He's also waiting to see if he can get a clump of tanks to bunch up like that or pick off a tank on the high ground. Four goons, five goons gonna pick off two tanks. Sure, he's gonna take some losses. I wonder if there's a Reaver in here. This is so annoying. Another Zealot bomb on top of the tank. You can see why Snow is known for his great shuttle play. Sure, he loses the shuttle, but trades tanks for Zealots. Always what you want. Now the command center is done. And I do have to point out that Scan does have plus two weapon. He is gonna mine out his main pretty soon. However, if he can stabilize and get that fourth base where Ooh. Snow is moving, he will be in an okay position, but we already see a carrier switch. Yeah, we already see plus one attack on the Arbiter as well. This is a mistake. Here, here comes Snow. Is he going to take this fight? Actually, you know what, Nyokin? I think Scan's doing yeah. really well this game. Scan's uh, army is very big right now. I think if Snow goes for it, this would be a big mistake from him. Yeah, and the thing is, like, you know, it looks like Scan has had a really hard time establishing his third, but, oh, Snow's going to go for a recall. thing is, Snow's only been on four base. You know, there's no fifth base. Recall on top of the third. If, I mean, that was not the best recall, to be honest with you, because if these units go down, that's going to be a lot of uh, breathing space for the Terran player, but the command center is not going to be killed. And actually, that's that's really denying mining and at this point 60 minutes of the game the natural and the main well the main is basically mined out for scan yeah main is going to be mined out almost every single time 17 minutes okay it looks like scans realized that well i got to do something he's just gonna move out so this is gonna be his hail mary because he doesn't have a third base his main is basically gone at this point I, I i don't see this really ever working unless an emp hits literally every single protoss unit and he doesn't lose a single tank for now, it is pushing, but that's simply because Protoss is switching into carriers right now. Also, half of the army is kind of behind uh, at this yeah. third base. But once Snow actually loses these units and gets everything on the right side of the map, Scan is in big time trouble. Oh, actually, it looked like this was a bait to just draw the units out of the third base. Yeah, I mean, it's just hard. Snow, Snow is just so good, man. It, it, any that. move here as Terran is, is so difficult to make, but... Honestly, Scan is still in a decent position uh, just because Protoss, oh my god, that mine okay, doesn't quite blow up all the tanks there. So that was good for Scan. If Scan reestablishes this third, <laughs> the thing is, oh my god, he's still microing a Reaver 17 minutes in, dude. I told you, this guy, he's the Reaver King. And my... The thing is, the shuttle's still there. I know it's, it's still alive. By the Ar he oh he killed the Goliath god. with the goons. So there's nothing to kill the Arbiter. So it, it just remains alive. And now he's going to harass the main. Sure, all the SCVs have been transferred. But this is going to draw more units out of position. If I'm Scan, I am so mad about this Protoss player. That, like, I would be, just be tilted off the face of the Earth. And look at the supplies. Max for Snow. Five bases. Oh 100 supply God. only for Terran. Oh, here comes another. Okay, it's just a stasis. <laughs> <laughs> That's really annoying, too, when you stasis the... Uh... 
vessel because the recall's coming. That was not just a random stasis so on top of the tanks as well. Oh my god, that's so many units. Yeah, and the, the science vessel got stasis too, so he had to use a scan. He's going to lose a lot of his SCVs. There are also a lot of tank supplies have plummeted from 100 all the way down to probably about 75. Scan just doesn't have any money. His NAT is mined out now. So it's one base Terran versus really three base mining Protoss right now. I can even see that the Nat of Snow is running a little bit. Okay, it looks like that's running dry. Yeah, it's it's starting to look really, really, really bad. I mean, it's starting to look really... It's been looking pretty bad for Scan most of this uh, later game, but this is looking insurmountable, especially with the double carriers there, and then that's going to creep up to four. And the thing is, Snow are, already is transitioning into that air weapons upgrade, and... Terran's nowhere near 3-2, I don't think. I mean, he that's the one saving grace maybe for Scan is that he is getting the 3-2, but I don't think 3-2 is going to cut it when you're 70 supply versus max. He is killing a couple probes here. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I have no idea how Scan can get back into this game. Yeah, well, if Scan brings... If if, if Scan stabilizes at any point in this game, uh, somebody's going to be need, needing to make a call to David Kim because that, that's, that's ridiculous. We need to get him on the phone. Be like David, yeah. uh, do do you see what Terran's doing in this game? <laughs> this is crazy. And there, oh. there are those carriers that Snow is also known for. He's not just known for the Reaver play. He he has some of the most annoying carriers. If you thought Bonneth had annoying carriers, uh, Snow oh Snow is he also, he also got double cybernetic score. Yeah. He knows the no. power of the armor upgrades, man. He he's watched yeah. the video. He knows he's three watched two. Your video. Yeah. <laughs> Good thing Nyokin was there to tell me about it. Here comes another bust. With a bunch of Zalus just man walking into the third base of Scan. You know, Scan thought he had a couple, uh, some reprieve there, but no, unrelenting snow has been this game. And GG, what a game one, man. Yeah, and I thought that was about as good of an opener as you can get for Scan after seeing 12 Nexus. He killed so many probes. Sure, he lost a bunch of ultras, but his supply was very, very close to snow's when he started thinking about building a third base. Remember, it was like 100 to about 80. That's about as close as you're going to get as Terran. But those goons and those reavers just... How many minutes did he delay that third base? It had to have been at least five minutes. It was a long time, there, But see, that's what I was going to say. Like, Protoss, Protoss was investing quite a bit to keep that down. You know, uh, the, the usual progression you see in this matchup is that Terran gets up to three base, Protoss gets up to five. And honestly, Snow wasn't tremendously ahead in supply, and he was only on four base for a long time. So, you know, if he hadn't killed that command center early on, I feel like this was looking really good for Scan. Yeah, it did look okay for Scan, but now we do have our first finalist in the winner's match. Now we're going to be going into a quick break, and then when we get back, we're going to see Shuttle versus Sock, another TVP.
All right, we are back. We just saw Snow kind of crush Scan in the initial matches, but Scan looked pretty good. But you can see that just how good Snow is compared to other lower level pro players, just that was ridiculous. And that was with taking a lot of probe damage. So it's uh, just surprising how strong they actually are. Damn, are those uh, coffee cups? I think they're thermoses. You know, actually when I went yeah, to Korean thermoses. class, when I went to Korean class, they gave me a thermos when I graduated from my first <laughs> class, yeah. Yeah, did it have ASL written on it? I wish. Then throw that out then. <laughs> um, yeah, Snow, dude. I mean, Snow's just... <laughs> Snow's incredible, dude. Like, uh, the, the small things that Snow does, like he was microing the uh, shuttle, like uh, you saw that at some point he was just demining minefields with one zealot and the Arbiter. I mean, it was just obnoxious. I mean, the guy is just obnoxious, but insanely good. That was a sick matchup. Yeah, as I mentioned on the last stream, I think in the past when I was playing in Bi Clan, I did play versus Snow quite a bit, and he did one of three things versus you, or versus me at least. You know Reaver is coming. He will either kill all your depots, kill all your SCVs, or kill all your units with his tanks. It's just crazy how strong this guy is. But speaking of Protoss players, now we've got Shuttle. You can see that his win rates are pretty darn good across the board. And he's going to be going up against Sock uh, in this particular match. Yeah, I'm just uh, evaluating the uh, the music. A bit weak. A bit, that's a bit weak, Shuttle Man. Like, I mean, let's be real. Well, a lot of Korean guys actually like slow, slow. Yeah, they music. like the ballads. Yeah, they do actually. Let's see what Sock likes. Oh, he likes IU. Dude, I wasn't I. Oh, I like this song. This seems a little bit more upbeat. Yeah, this is my kind of. Wasn't uh, wasn't IU uh, for Shuttle also? Are they both IU fan guys, fanboys? I, I didn't see who was singing that song, but probably because IU is maybe the most famous girl here, like just everywhere. She's oh, right now? Yeah. yeah, she's even in a drama that I was recommended. She's everywhere, man. And like when I get on the subway, there's. She's on almost every single advertisement, just all over the place. It looks well, like our second match is ready. Again, it's going to be Eclipse. This time, Shuttle versus Sock. It's going to be a battle of STX Soul going up against a SK Telecom player. Let's see who's going to make it into our winner's match going up against Snow. This time, in the bottom left, our Protoss player, it is Shuttle. And in the top right, it is Sock. Well, I was surprised that Snow didn't go for any aggressive play on Eclipse, and I don't think that Shuttle's going to be the same type of Protoss player. I do think that we may see Forward Gate here. If I see 12 Nexus, of course 12 Nexus is great, but I would be surprised that neither of the top Protoss players went for an aggressive build on it. Such a good aggressive map like Eclipse. Well, even 12 Nexus is kind of a pseudo uh, aggressive style because you do force the Terran to do something about it. Um, we'll have to see is. here. I mean, you know what I'd be surprised is if they just gate expand from their main. You know, like, oh, I'm just, I'm just going to do a standard... Uh, 11 gate and not scout and just chill in my side in my side of the map So at least the probe is going out after the pylon. So this probe has the potential to gas steal It is a bit late to guarantee that gas steal, but it is gonna put on some pressure This is exactly what you want to see on this map Yeah, and there is that SCV on nice. the ramp now This is gonna buy time for sock to get his gas up and running without having to cut an SCV So we'll see if he can actually keep this SCV in position so far. No, he lets it slip through almost instantly. Now, is he going to cancel an SCV to get this up? No, he doesn't. He's just going to let no. the gas get stolen. Now, what are your thoughts on being gas stolen? What's your follow-up? Follow -up? Of course, you're going to have to take a Nexus. 
but yeah. he hasn't scouted at all. Is there like a chance that we see a double racks? No, there's no way. I mean, double racks is you have to confirm a proxy gate for sure. I mean, unless you're trying to do some kind of crazy cheese and you proxy okay. the racks. Oh my god, this probe's doing so much damage. This is badass. If you gonna go down, look at that micro man, just so clean. Kills the SCV. That's so annoying. Sock feels pressure to go out and scout as well. You know, sometimes some Terrans kind of just don't even scout and they play blind because I mean, you you can. Uh, but Sock looks like he wants to know if this is a Nexus follow up or not. And you know, it's it's really important to because the thing is, as Terran, if you get your factory, your delayed factory, and then the Protoss just goes for a, a, a quick Nexus, you can't do anything about it so you have to match the command center timing with the nexus timing he's gonna get in here he sees there's no gas so he knows what's up and in this situation if you're socked you don't even pull scvs to kill the gas i don't think i think you just go and put down your command center yeah he could do that well but instead he's putting a lot of scvs on that top uh, yeah. on the top side of his base trying to take down that uh, that uh, assimilator and this is no gonna eBay be... block either yeah no ebay block i'm just at a loss for what Sock is doing here. He is in such trouble. Now he's got this probe inside the base still. I think if if uh, Shuttle ended up hiding the probe at like the top corner while the Zealot harassment was going on, there could have been a real scenario where we I mean, could have seen proxy DTs or something. But you know what's funny about this? Because this has been delayed so long, I wouldn't even be surprised if Shuttle puts down like a third Nexus off of simply nothing. Well, it looks like four Marines is going to be enough to deal with this. Nice micro there from Sock. Doesn't lose a Marine just yet. He is building the bunker, but this is exactly what I was talking about where, I mean, sure, we got the gas, but uh, our command center is lagging significantly behind this Nexus, and we don't. there's no compensation for it, really, as Terran. So definitely from the opener, Protoss is a bit ahead, I would say. Protoss is massively ahead. This is insane opener for for shuttle everything went right for him he gets the first scv kill he gas steals he built two zealots which forces out a lot of marines he forced the bunker of course Get, the command center got delayed too everything looks fantastic for him behind this he is just going for standard he's not well he's got 400 minerals man is that gonna be another nexus it can't be that that's that's no, like no that's way, like man. b protos on the ladder where they're just like oh well i'm just gonna build a nexus because i got the money <laughs> no but uh, i mean the second nexus just finished so that's gonna start uh, double probe production the cybernetic score finished so that he's gonna start range with that and a dragoon so you know sometimes well that second guess is really early for shuttle though so i'm so i'm gonna be interested to see exactly what he does with it well, he's definitely getting that gas since he got his nat, or yeah. he got his main gas delayed for a long time. He, he, it really took That's him true. a long time to get that up. So he does need to catch up in gas. Whether or not he continues to mine it for a long time is yet to be seen, but definitely wants to get up to at least 200 gas so he can plop down that robotics ASAP. Meanwhile, Sock is transitioning decently well. He's got two factories. Supplies are relatively close. There is that robo as expected. Yeah, and the second gas is finished here. So, you know, I've been looking at Shuttle's resources. He is floating quite often to the 400 minerals. And, you know, you don't want to see that. But it uh, looks like it is going to stabilize here. He is going to get triple gate here with the robotics. So that, to me, is telegraphing observers. But what is he banking this gas for? Looks like he's just going to go for an expansion I mean, I guess, I guess he just needs the the gas to start making obs and goons, but it just seems a bit. It seems like shuttle's build is a bit off. Well, this goon interception is fantastic, preventing the SCV getting into the main. Remember, Sock doesn't really know what this is. If you come in here and see no observatory or support bay as part of the semi wall, this could have been a DT follow up. It could have been a lot of things. However, Sock is getting away with absolute murder because I didn't yeah. see an eBay anywhere. I didn't see an academy anywhere. He's going straight into four fact. There's no support bay just yet, so this is about as ideal as it's going to get for our Terran player. Yeah, and this is something that I heard Scan talk about as well that you know four fact is a nice build against zealots, like a zealot or gateway opening or a gateway expand because 
the early zealots kind of just uh delay your build as protoss they don't really do anything and they don't contribute anything against this uh four factory timing attack so this is going to be an early attack from sock the thing is four factory can be punished in a sense by early tech but you know sock seems like either he got the scouting right or he read his opponent right he has a really solid build against what shuttle is doing i mean shuttle is basically on three gate obs into this third base five tanks are out seven minutes in this is the timing fourth gate now coming no obs in sight for shuttle shuttle has no idea this is coming i mean the obs is creeping its way down in the middle of the map but this four factory vulture follow-up with the five tanks this is going to be a sick attack by sock oh my gosh the observer just barely missed sock moving across the map and as you mentioned this is going to be a good build versus what shuttle ended up going for the fact that the nexus went up at seven minutes with this with how the game has progressed sock knows that there cannot be a shuttle there cannot be a reaver so he's just going to be running into pure gateways right now mines get up get set up a couple of vultures ended up going down instantly now is there enough to deal with this amount of goons and the zealot as you mentioned the zealot kind of dead weight but it does force a, a mine drag and i think sock is in trouble this just seems like way too many tanks but as i say that the, the tanks are doing a lot of damage yeah their tanks are starting to lay into those dragoons but i mean so far so good for shuttle looks like he's gonna defend this oh, no. just right and you thought oh my god all these tanks are gonna go down i well are they but they have yeah. to trade but even if they trade it would be it's terrible it's terrible terrible i hate seeing five tanks go down like this Niokin. And he even doesn't get that last goon that had one hit on it. And the pylon wall gets up in the nick of time. And as I mentioned, Sock doesn't have like an academy, doesn't have an eBay. That means he probably doesn't have an armory. So he yeah. is in very big trouble. And you can see that instantly he puts down a command center. He has to because that's the only way he can catch up. He's lost so much. He's going to lose more vultures here. But this is going to make him very vulnerable to a counterattack. Sometimes when you're four facting like this, it seems like you should you have to go 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 and not give Protoss too much time. But I feel like Sock could have benefited there from just waiting for another round or two of vultures. If he had, you know, eight vultures with those tanks, they definitely could have surrounded the dragoons. They could have mined everything up. And then at the same time with the eight vultures, you would have had time to research siege. So maybe you get the siege and basically siege down the third base so i feel like sock was a bit too um he, he was impatient enough with that push and he got punished for it yeah and you can see just how many vultures sock built that means that there's probably no tanks out for sock right now if shuttle was to just a move goons across the map with an observer i think he would flat out win the game you can see at the natural there's one dot sitting outside that bunker that's probably the lone tank now, what I do like that Sh uh, Shuttle is doing is I don't see a Stargate. He's going into that Templar tech where it's it's tons of harassment, tons of drops, drop play. And I think that's fantastic versus what Sock is going for because Sock has no upgrades. And one of the weak points of the Templar style is, hey, you might be harassing forever, but if Terran just sits there and builds up mass tanks with 3-2, they can make a comeback. But since there's no upgrades, I don't care yeah. if you're just sitting there with mass tanks. You're going to be at 00 or plus one or something. So this is a really nice follow-up from Shuttle. Yeah, I totally agree with you, Nyokin. And this build, this follow-up from Sock, you don't see it every day. I, I, it is interesting. I, I'm curious here. I mean, the armory is going to be late, but uh, it, when you're going six factories, I mean, that is definitely a commitment. I, I don't think we're even going to see a starport, so... We'll have to see. I mean, if it's just straight up six factories, I feel like he's going to get smacked down. You can see Protoss already has Templars out there inside that shuttle. So that shuttle is full of four Templars. There's a bunch of gates coming in here. It's going to be so difficult for Sock to make this six fact work. Well, you can see that there is a 35 supply lead for shuttle right now. As expected, shuttles and Templars are starting to come out. Because Sock has so many factories so fast, he's going to be able to keep up in supply relatively well. Sure, he's down 50 now. But there's going to be about a 15 <laughs> to 20 supply jump in Sock's supply in a second. Now, what is hard about Eclipse is this particular spot right here where you need to defend your third base and there's no area to actually build like depots or turrets anywhere. And Shuttle's going to abuse that. Looks like he's going to probably just go for it. The tank count is minimal. It's only at about five. 
Yeah, but I mean, this is six factories, so Sock has more units than you would anticipate as Protoss, given what happened. That's a lot of tanks. There's uh, mines out in front, the four Goliaths as well. We'll have to see how well he can snipe this shuttle. There are uh, Templar inside of it. One goes, one storm goes down, doesn't really hit anything, but the three Templar aren't getting focused, and they're just going to storm on top of the tanks and the vultures with more units coming in from the bottom. Another storm on top of the Terran army, and Sock gets murdered. Yeah, this is going to be a crushing blow to Sock here. He loses his whole army. And the funny thing is that fight went about as well as it's going to go, and it just doesn't matter. He taps out, and Shuttle, he just crushes through the RSK Telecom player. Uh, that's heartbreaking for Sock, because I really feel like he had a timing with that 4 factory. It seemed like everything was going well for him. But uh, yeah, I think he just went too early, man. Yeah, as you mentioned, probably needed one more round of vultures. Then he would have basically just instantly killed those two zealots. One zealot came in and forced a mine drag, which means that the goons don't even have to deal with the mines, and they're not kind of just standing there firing and not dealing any damage. And we have to remember that Sock lost a pro or lost an SCV in the initial stages of the game, so it was a disaster all over the place. And as I said, that fight, even though it looked one-sided for Shuttle, because it was, it went about as well as it's going to go because if you notice at the end, those goons weren't even attacking units. They were attacking the floating racks. So that just tells you how far ahead Shuttle was. Yeah, I mean, after you smack that four factory and you have a three three base going there in, in Shuttle's position, it's just so incredibly strong. But yeah, that's going to be it for this game. Up next is going to be Shuttle versus Snow, the winner's match, so don't go anywhere.
We are back. We just saw Shuttle crush through Sock, and unfortunately our Terran heroes today are not up to par. The Protoss players are just a little bit too strong. Our next map is going to be Hidden Track. I don't think we've really seen this map at all so far this season, so this should be interesting. It's going to be a PvP of Snow versus Shuttle. Yeah, Hidden Track is an interesting map. I've seen a couple of games here and there on the players' of streams, but definitely not of uh, PvP. So excited to see this one, Shuttle versus Snow. That's gonna. This is gonna be an epic matchup. Now, obviously, Snow's probably a bit favored here, but uh, you know, can go either way. Yeah, I really like Snow in a PvP, but PvP is one of those matchups where you can uh, get a little frisky with some builds. You know, got delayed DTs. <laughs> Luckily for Snow, I would say that Rain is not still playing PvP because that guy had just an insane win rate. He could pull out literally anything and just win versus you. So this is going to be very interesting. Let's see who's going to make it out in first place of Group D. Is it our player Shuttle? Or is it going to be our Protoss Superstar, Snow? In the green, in the top right, it is Shuttle. And in the yellow in the bottom right, it is Snow. All right, so I haven't really seen a lot of games on this particular map. I know that there are narrow pathways all over the place. Uh, I'm not too sure if that's going to be such a big deal in PvP. It does come into play in a lot of the other matchups, but I'm not too sure about, you know, the comps that Protoss players usually go with, with Dragoon, Reaver. Uh, you know, so you see a lot of shuttle harassment, so sometimes the pathways don't even matter. So we'll see what both of these players opt into. Of course, there are so many viable openers in PvP. Yeah, this map... I mean, we'll have to see in PvP, like you said. The thing is, PvP, the map doesn't really matter so much as whether or not there's a ramp. You know, like, it's just... Is there a ramp? And then after that, it really depends only once you get into 3-4 bases, which... In PvP, it doesn't, often, or it doesn't happen too often, so we'll have to see. I don't think the map comes into play too, too much in the early mid-game here. So it is a four-player map, though, and there's a ramp. So as it's basically as standard as it, as it gets. You kind of can expect a lot of one-gate robo-play in these conditions, but uh, we'll have to see what the players go for. Well, as usual, the biggest question is, is anybody going to opt into two gate? And it looks like Snow might be the one. Nope, instead he was just banking a little bit of more resources by having that probe continue to mine. Now he's going to put down his gas. Meanwhile, Shuttle matching it with just a slightly faster gas. Yeah, this is the ASL knife and not the BSL. I'd be surprised to, want to see two gate here. Uh, it's, it's so rare actually to see two gate. I feel like maybe I just don't watch enough PvPs, but uh, at this level, it's just... It, it can be so punishing if you don't get in there and kill the probes, and everyone... You know, I mean, this is basically land latency, so everyone's micro is just so tip-top, tippity-top, top-notch, that it can be just extremely unforgiving if you don't get any damage. So one gate is going to be the name of the game here. Now, what's... What I'm keeping my eyes open is, first of all, obviously, if there's a Citadel going down early. Snow with a cross-spawn scout, though, so he is aware that... <laughs> Shuttle might have done something like a proxy 2 gate in the middle of the map. Uh, but, confirms that that is not the case. Now, are we going to see anyone throw down a second gate before their third pylon? Yeah, we'll see if a second gate comes up or if there is going to be a fast robotics or citadel from either of these players. What I find surprising is that despite scouting cross map, Snow skipped the Zealot. You would think like, wow, okay, that means he can only be close spawns. I should build a Zealot. But instead, <laughs> he decides to not do that. And now this Zealot just moved across the map completely without even scouting. And he's going to find Snow first. And now this goon is going to have to micro or... Looks like the Zelda is just going to tuck tail and turn around. Yeah, well, I, I actually do like this from 
from shuttle because even if the snow even if the zealot just walked into snow's mineral line most likely it would have just gotten killed here so at least now the zealot joins the dragoon and the thing is it only really took shield damage so that's going to be regen up and then the zealot is going to be ready or available for the first engagements with the dragoon so really nice play there i mean shuttle was really fortunate we saw a big difference between the two players that snow opted to, to go for a really early probe scout whereas it looks like shuttle kind of more indifferent as to what snow is doing and he only went he went for like a late zealot scout but fortunately for him snow was in the first position that he checked and it looks like both players going for that one gate robo shuttle though adding that second gate we'll have to see if uh, snow is feeling frisky and you know, I'm curious, will he try and throw down the Nexus? No, there's no way. So at least he's going to get up to a Reaver before expanding, that's for sure. Yeah, everything so far looks pretty standard. We've got a slower gateway for Snow, so he was prioritizing, I guess, building that third goon first and getting a little bit more mining with his probes. Now there's the observatory. I wonder if Shuttle is going to match the observatory timing or if it's going to be support bay. It is just going to be a matching observatory timing now you can see that snow is down a little bit of supply but that's simply because shuttles a second gateway just finished so of course he's gonna be able to pump out a couple more goons now we have a probe going down to the corner of shuttle space i'm sure that's going to be a support bay momentarily there's snow support bay yeah and uh i mean snow's tech is going to be a bit faster here Looks like Shuttle is committed to that two-gate production. So definitely what we're going to see here is that because Snow's on one gate, he's going to have his Nexus out faster. But Shuttle, with that two-gate production, is going to have a timing to basically pressure this Nexus. So most likely in this game, Shuttle is going to be the aggressor. Snow is going to be the defender. And we'll have to see if Snow can hang on to his early expansion. Well, we have to point out that harassment... Is an uh, uh, harassment spawns is an advantage for shuttle because shuttle can go directly into the main of snow and snow spending these 400 resources on a nexus will hurt him because now he's gonna have to balance his defense at his nat while also balancing the defense at his oh. main and he's gonna catch this observer really nicely done and that hurts because now shuttle really doesn't know what this is is it three gate three gate should have hit by now is it a nexus off of one gate what exactly is going on he doesn't know if it's a citadel either so that means he's probably gonna have to build another observer very quickly he can't just go straight into two reavers well i mean it's definitely not a citadel i reckon this is a robotics but he well, that, oh that's that's right that's right i forgot i was thinking <laughs> i was thinking that he just took down the observer without vision for some reason yeah but <laughs> <laughs> at least he knows that it's a robotic so he can push out because he knows i mean shuttle did get the fastest second gate possible with his robotics build so knowing that it's robotics versus robotics, but he most likely has the fastest uh, second gate you could have, he, he definitely can push out here and check. You know, that's what's nuts about Protoss versus Protoss is that you can get so much information deduced like that. So I do like this move out from Shuttle, but he does not have a Reaver. He knows he has more goons though, and this, the micro sick just slams one Dragoon, moves back before the Reaver even gets a shot off, even almost killed that Shuttle. So this is really good for, uh, well, I mean, so far it's still good for Snow. I mean, he did get the, the Observer kill early on, which is really important. Obviously, it's hard to find the production in that one robotics when you're building just non-stop Shuttle Reaver to make another Observer. It looks like, uh, it, it looks like actually Shuttle does have a second Observer, which can explain why this Shuttle and Reaver are so late to the party. But finally, the Shuttle finishes for Shuttle. And we'll have to see if he goes here for another attack. Third and fourth gate going to be going down for Snow. That Reaver of Snow did get off a juicy hit onto a lot of the goons. They were clumped up for a while. Second Reaver is out, and I don't think Shuttle is matching the Reaver count. Yeah, he only has one right now. But these double bridges are going to prevent an engagement for Snow. Oh, he's going to go for it? Yeah, I thought that was a bit uh, ambitious to go for that. <laughs> Yeah, these double bridges are going to be a nice choke here for Snow to hold. You can see, like, these players, they just practice so much uh, that they're always acquainted with all the maps. So definitely Snow, instead of staying in his natural, like a lot of uh, players might, 
I mean, obviously, Snow is uh, undisputably one of the greatest players in the world of all time, really, at this point. So, uh, knows exactly where to hold <laughs> his units. But, like you pointed out earlier, Nyokin, these are good positions for Shuttle to harass in. So, I'm, yeah, I was going to say, uh, probably he's waiting for Shuttle Speed to start doing that kind of harassment. It does finish. He does come to the natural, which is unexpected, but ooh, just one reaver gets a couple probes and then pieces out before the shuttle takes any HP damage. Yeah, you can see that there's a slight supply lead for shuttle right now. Here comes her ha her, some harassment of snows going into the natural, but he doesn't have speed, so that's a bit dangerous because if sh uh, shuttle had gotten over to the right side, may have been able to intercept that shuttle and it wouldn't have gotten away. Now it looks like Snow's the one that's looking to put on a contain, but with a 10 supply lead almost, I don't really think Shuttle's in any danger. Looks like Snow's going to be putting down a third Nexus, potentially. Yeah, looks like it. I mean, this this game is not uh, finishing anytime soon here. Did you Again, see Snow's gateway count? It's only at three. This is crazy. Yeah, well, I mean, maybe crazy is what he needs here <laughs> to, to even up the supply lead. This is this is nuts. It's now a 20 supply lead for shuttle. He has six gateways. He's probably got a citadel coming pretty soon if he doesn't have one already. Oh, observer gets taken down, but Reaver trades some scarabs for a goon. But look at the army. It's just I, I realize that's just a rally point, but it's tiny. The goon count for shuttle is massively larger than Snow's. Yeah, but the thing is, I mean, Snow has Snow's playing so aggressively, and there's no observer out onto the map for shuttle so really snow is just keeping shuttle back with minimum amount of units and i mean still it's gonna take a while for this third nexus to come online you can see he's still on three gate oh, and, oh my god the shuttle cannot go down for snow yeah if he caught that it, the game's over of course he doesn't know what snow's doing behind this for all he knows snow could have been like eight gate all in but he's not. He's on three gateways right now. He's got his third nexus coming up. He gets away with this. He will, you know, have a massive lead. Now the Citadel just starts. Now Forge just starts. And we do see Gateway Flood now starting to come in for Snow. So he's going to catch up in supply pretty quickly. Yeah, I mean, Shuttle needs to get some scouting done. But uh, it's just so hard once your opponent clearly, once your opponent has this position over the double bridges, it's so hard to play. And, okay, I mean, a, a nice uh, back and forth shuttle dancing between the two players can see that this is exactly what the kind of micro you need to play at this level. But, yeah, if you're shuttle, I mean, what do you do in this situation? You, you would think, the thing is, even if he goes to the right, you know, into that hidden track, as it were, like to the, to the right side there, if you would attack, I mean, Snow has so much time to just reposition from the middle of the map and hold a ramp. At the bottom right so you can see just the middle of the map on this uh, on this map and the double bridges are so important oh he gets an observer oh every God. little win is so important for snow to make sure that he can get his third base econ up and running make sure that he doesn't get busted by this overwhelming uh, unit count for for shuttle but as i say that it's really getting the gap is closing very quickly now this shuttle may be a little bit ambitious but instead he snipes another goon Yeah, I mean, both players just sizing each other up. The thing is, though, this is benefiting Snow. The the really, the, the huge problem Shuttle has had all game is that his observers keep dying. He has no idea what he's playing against, so he doesn't even know that there's a, a third base here from Snow. And really, Snow is getting so far ahead. Well, I mean, he's not, right, in a sense, because obviously Shuttle has more supply. But the reality is, the longer this goes... Shuttle will have just a one one attack to make it work. Yeah, and because Snow's been building probes at its third nexus, even though the supplies are you know within ten, it could be something like a fifteen to twenty supply lead in the in the army count. Now, Protoss is about to be maxed for both players, and Storm is coming out. I noticed that the Templar Archive wasn't done for Snow just yet, so that's gonna be another advantage. Oh, he gets a Reaver. But that's going to be another advantage for uh, for Shuttle in the massive engagement that you're talking about. 
Well, I mean, Shuttle is desperately trying to... <laughs> it's just so hard to push over these two bridges. Dude, Dan, this is such a hard position to be in as as Shuttle because what do you do? You can't just bum rush the two bridges. It's such a positional well, disadvantage. Well, he should start considering going to the top side because he can loop around like that. There's no vision. He could also harass. I yeah, mean, he, he could, could take harass. the shuttle and just go inside of Snow's base. Look at how big that army is. It is gigantic. And he's got a lot of zealots, too. And he's got He's Storm. maxed. Yeah, he's maxed. Meanwhile, you Snow don't see is that. <laughs> I know. He's maxed on 14 minutes in a PvP. And now we're finally going to have a fight. But as you, as you mentioned, the bridges are punishing. Look at how how bunched up these units are shuttle falls down but so does the reavers of snow what is snow's units doing on the left side they're going all the way to the top left and shuttle's just pushing through easily okay that was so weird i was thinking maybe the zealots are gonna wrap around and go uh, for a counterattack to the non and snow, third but snow's dead he has no goons so he can't okay he has a few goons but look how many goons that shuttle actually has it's crazy Shuttle's got Storm with He's this, got too. Storm He's got too. Templar. Uh, Forge, or plus one, just kicked in. That's a massive upgrade in PvP. So he's going to have a huge advantage, not just in AoE. Reaver needs to get off some huge hits. The Storm is okay. Need to see some more Storms, though. Oh, my God. The Zealot flank from Snow is coming, too, from the uh, top left. And now, I mean, it looks like Shuttle just has too too many things. But the double Reaver here from Snow, it, are, they're going to do some work. It's back and forth, really, but it looks like Shuttle's supply is plummeting, and Snow's Reavers are doing work. The Zealots from the back are got on top of a group of Dragoons and completely slaughtered them. Is yeah. Snow going to hold? Yeah, those Zealots in the back were heroes getting on top of all the Goons, and meanwhile, the Zealots were in the front just dying to the Reaver. And somehow, despite the initial botch, Snow is going to hold on, and he has three bases versus a Protoss player that's just now taking their third base. Yeah, I mean, that's it. <laughs> that's going to be it. Snow's going to be so far ahead. Because, look, Shuttle already mined out his main base. Snow's still mining from his... He, he was able to, to essentially transfer probes off of it. So getting that efficiency with the probes is so important. And now, well, I mean, the game will go on. Snow is only at a 20 or even a 15 supply lead here. And it is hard to attack on this map, so... Looks like Snow has a contingent of Zealots coming in to this third base with the Reaver behind. Uh, looks like there's going to be some harassment at this third base. And this, these Reavers, they're going to get this Nexus, potentially. The Reavers hurt. Oh my gosh, they do oh so much. My Great God, storm. They do so much damage. Great storm. Maybe he can kill the Reavers? Oh, he got him. Oh, oh well. what's this? That's a reaver drop of his own shuttle trying to do some damage. Look at that focus fire on top of the shuttle, though. That was slick from Snow. Snow's already building a fourth base, and yeah, this is starting to look pretty good for Snow. I mean, this reaver is going to kill a couple of probes, force mining off of this base from Snow. But, you know, the units do get cleaned up here. And finally, I mean, Snow stabilizes here, and shuttle has just one more attack he lost that nexus there's no way he can build another one and uh be on par with snow because snow already has a fourth base so he has to go for an attack here yeah supplies are okay for shuttle but losing that reaver is going to be a big detriment looks like snow's slightly out of position high ground advantage for shuttle right now if he was to send just even two or three zots around to the bottom left base he may be able to de deny it, but instead, he's going to continue to push the issue. He's got a lot of storms available. That's a decent one. So many storms on the high ground. Snow taking a lot of damage on those goons. Yeah, I mean, this is <laughs> this map's really sick, actually. It has some interesting features. Shuttle is going to go and attack here. You know, the, the fact that Shuttle... Well, Reaver <sighs> drop going behind. It's going to connect on top of the cannon. Kills a couple of uh, probes, but he needs way more damage than this to get back into the game. And look at this. Shuttles is pushing through into this third base. He's going to get some kills onto the probes. Again, there are so many units that went to the top left for Snow. I'm, I'm wondering what exactly that move is. Meanwhile, Shuttle attacking the natural. Also, great storms onto a lot of the goons. Man, Shuttle's finding some sick counterplay, but the thing is, he's just broke, man. Like, he's barely 
mining from his natural. I can only imagine he has a couple of mineral patches left, so he basically has to kill Snow. I mean, Snow's mining from bottom left, so even though these attacks look all right for Shuttle, it looks like he... Oh, another six storm kills Double Reaver there, but I, even if he kills this Nexus, he's still dead. Yeah, but now he's got a 10 supply lead, and he's got still powerful AoE units in the Archon and the Reaver. This is a dead Nexus. Snow is lucky to have bottom left. As you mentioned, Shuttle is running dry, though. He needs to get that top middle base. Another Reaver drop coming in from Snow, and with this, or with this attack finally getting pushed back, I think this is going to be Shuttle just running uh, out of steam, and Snow should be able to take this game. Oh, well, as I say that, there's the shuttle. It's found bottom left. Well, it's found bottom left. Well, if somehow shuttle can kill this bottom left nexus, somehow, some way, I mean, he will be able to get back into this game, but it, <laughs> how's he going to do that? Yeah, look at this. He sees that the nexus isn't even up, so he doesn't even unload a reaver because if you're just mining on one base, he's not too worried about that when he has two of his own. So yeah. he is just going to turn back around and make sure he doesn't die to the incoming final attack from Shuttle. There's that Reaver. It needs to be very careful to not get intercepted. What I like about this Reaver, though, is it draws all the units to bottom left, which means that the natural is quite open. There's a lack of units on that side. Well, we'll have to see. I mean, Shuttle still has some decent supply. He can make something work. It is Zealot Archon for Zealot Archon and Reavers. But actually, this is a good engagement from Shuttle. He also has a Storm. He's waiting to use that. You can see both players were really playing around that. Snow himself has a couple Templar, but doesn't look like he actually went into a Storm. So Shuttle is going to actually push Snow back. Oh my god, how's he even doing it? The triple Archons are doing so much work. Storm on top of the Shuttle Reaver. He kills the Shuttle. The Reaver is so low. A couple of Dragoons joining in the fight for Shuttle. And this is... They're both playing with... But, oh my god, dude, Shuttle was so close, but it looks like Snow's reinforcements are going to do him in. Oh my gosh, Shuttle just doesn't have enough, and it's going to be Snow just barely holding on in an epic back and forth PvP. And he's going to be the first one to make it out of Group D. And that was a really sick game. Hidden Track, wow, <laughs> it's got a lot of intricate features and if shuttle yeah. just was able to be uh, even if he was distance mining top middle he may have just had barely enough to build a couple more units and push through that was a sick game and that map was was pretty awesome to watch um but yeah snow is going to advance in first place here i guess no surprise but he did cut it close i mean even the you know Obviously, that game versus Scan looked a, looked pretty convincing, but I feel like Scan had some good fighting chances there. But he almost lost here against Shuttle. We're gonna get into an interview with with Snow. So of course, we're gonna get some sick Gypsy translation. Well, Snow, you just smacked your group. How do you feel? Well, I you know she said, "Well, wow, that was an impressive uh, performance there, Snow. You just smacked your group." It was, look, you made it look easy. How do you feel? Yeah, well, I mean, these guys, I, they got nothing on me, man. I'm just the goat. <laughs> I'm sure that's exactly what he's saying. But Snow looked pretty impressive today. I was very worried in the Hidden Track game, just watching his build unfold where he has only three gates versus six for a long time. I thought for sure that Shuttle might just go and kill him. And then when they had the Max versus Max fight, taking out... The first couple reavers and then having multiple storms behind it shuttle had a chance to really bust through but just not enough somehow i don't i really don't know how snow held the attack because as, <laughs> yeah. as we mentioned shuttle had four templars four of them all with storm and snow had no storm at that point in the game yeah it was really weird because he actually had that zealot move out as well to the top left and i feel like maybe he was uh he was probably thinking that shuttle had a third base and those zealots we're out on the map to try and attack that third base. But joke's on him, Shuttle was on two base, just massing. But actually, fortunately for Snow, the, the Zealots that kind of ramboed onto the map and going for that attack to the third base just came back and flanked Shuttle's huge attack and killed all like a huge contingent of Dragoons. So turns out that was a really good move either way, almost a catch hole move at that timing for Snow. So. You know, sometimes you look at some of the plays that these players make and uh, you're like, wait, 
was that calculated or what? And if it was calculated, these guys have like massive galaxy brains, dude. Yeah, when those zealots moved to the top left, I thought, okay, well, that's just 25 supply he doesn't have. But they got on top of all the goons because all the zealots flooded into the front. And a really yeah. sick, clever move from Snow. Could have backfired very easily. Let's 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 not discount that. That could have been a huge backfire on him, but it ended up working out in the end. But now we're going to be setting up for a TVT, which is going to be yeah. Sock versus Scan. And I remember Scan saying that Sock's TVT is basically god tier, so it's going to be a hard TVT matchup for him. Yeah, that's going to be sick. I can't wait to see that. Uh, but yeah, Snow still kind of. Uh, Telling this lady that, yeah, you want my babies? I mean, get in line, lady. Um, yeah, okay. Well, that's the last time I'm saying anything about the translation, but... We'll have to see. I mean, again, Snow making out first place in this group. Expected. But barely against Shuttle. And, I mean, it could be anyone making out of this group uh, to join him. Yep, we'll have to see who's it going to be. Shuttle's going to be waiting in the Deciders match. Yeah. And we know that his PVT is quite strong, but I know for a fact that the Terran players are thankful that it's not Snow waiting in the Deciders match because that would have been ridiculous. Yeah, Ridic <laughs> Ridiculously that. hard. Well... Yeah, I mean, we'll have to see thing is uh shuttle looked all right versus uh sock as well i've not actually seen sock play any tvt so and i know scans tvt is incredible so it is surprising to hear him say that sock might be difficult but yeah that was the interview there and uh up next it is going to be that tvt that we've been talking about so you don't want to go anywhere we'll be right back All right, we are back. That was a quick commercial. I wasn't expecting that. But now we're going to have our TVT. And this time it's going to be Ascension. Looks like Scan banned Ultimate Stream. Of course, Sock, the only remaining one, ended up banning Hidden Track. Now, I know that as, uh, Scan talked about how hard Ascension is for TVP. He was telling me how it feels like it's impossible to stop a Protoss from just taking bases, even off of one gate. Now, TVT, of course, can be very different, but we have seen this map a couple of times. There are a ton of different pathways, but a, a lot of different high ground places. So 
TVT is always one of the maps where you have to have great map positioning, and I think you're going to see a lot of these players fighting for, uh, fighting even harder for position on this particular map. Yeah, Ascension. Well, I've seen this map before, Dan, in 2007. What? This is a 2007 yeah. map? Yeah, Blue Storm. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was about it to is... lose my mind. I'm like, what? <laughs> well, it is. It is. People have called this map the three-player blue storm. It and if you look at it, it literally has the same layout that blue storm has. There's like a small choke coming into your natural, but then there's kind of a high ground, a double high ground, with a big ramp uh, to use besides the choke. So it really has the same features that blue storm does. Except in three players, so it is going to be a sick uh, map to see here. But the game is ready, so players are going to play. Just a second. Scan versus Sock. We'll see who gets to challenge Shuttle for that last spot out of this group. In the red, one of the foreign hopes, the only foreign hope, it is Scan. And that is Sock in the blue, bottom left. Now I, as we've talked about, have not played this map, but you can see from the mini-map layout. Oh, I'm just realizing that the mini-map yeah. is, oh, no, I'm, I'm crazy, I'm like, for some reason, it's always yeah, been like yeah, that. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking from a player's <laughs> perspective that it's never you never get to see the whole mini map. Yeah, I'm losing my mind. But yeah, this map haven't played it, but you can see that the terrain. There's a lot of hills. There's a very, very, very tiny choke at the natural. So if a player sits there, they are gonna have just a deadly contain. However, there is a back path that you can take. So there are alternate ways to get out. But if, uh, but regardless, you don't want to get contained on either angle because that means as soon as you move out, you could get instantly counterattacked. Now, we do see that neither player is going for something crazy like a 10 10 10, like we saw Sexy pull out or Speed pull out the other yeah. day in TVZ. Well, we'll have to see. Three player maps are. Is, is, three player maps are super tricky in TVT, right? Like, uh, it, it's not so clear cut where you can just split a map. If someone, if one of the players actually gets a huge advantage in the middle of the map, that can that can be game ending. So, you know, early tempo is the name of the game on a map like this. And, you know, the other thing that we have to look at is rotational uh, advantages. So, I mean, what's your intuition tell you here, uh, Dan? Like, who do you think got the better end of these spawns? I'm not too sure if... Well, I think that... Sock has the better spawn because it seems like a faster path to setting up a contain but it mm -hmm. seems pretty even like if we just simply look at the pathway to get to the bottom right for example for scan it yeah. looks a little bit longer than Sock's path to get to top left so I think I would favor scan a little bit or I would favor Sock in that sense but at the same time scan has a faster route to just go for drops so there is advantages for both sides well, it looks like both players going for that SCV scout. No 14 command center or any of that shenanigans. No Rax expand either. Of course, Rax expand can be quite risky uh, in this matchup. So both players playing really, really safe with the Rax tucked in side of their base. You know, the Rax tucked into into the side of the base like that serves a dual purpose. First of all, obviously the Rax is uh, um, is closer to your enemy's base, so. You can see Sock floating it up after one Marine. The Rax is going to get that much faster to Scan's base, but at the same time, sometimes you can kind of fool the uh, player coming in for a scout into thinking, okay, did he proxy this Rax? Do I have to worry about an SC or a Marine out on the map? But most of the time, you know, seasoned players will see 
the factory timing and figure out exactly what's going on. But yeah, that's, you know, just a little tip there for uh, some of you guys. Well, we see that Scan is putting down his command center. Scan's going to, or Sock's going to get a scout into Scan's base. Scan missed the command center. So he does need to make a guess on what this actually is. He just barely missed it. So he's going to keep that SCB alive. He wants to see how many vultures pop out. Probably going to come in for a secondary scout in the next couple seconds. Yeah, that really hurts. But the thing is, he also saw the racks float really early on. So for the most part, if the racks floats and there's no Marines, if there's only one Marine out, it's very hard to be uh, aggressive. Plus, Scan's SCB was inside of Sox base and most likely saw that uh, gas was pulled off um, for Sock. So he should be able to figure this out that, you know, it is most likely looking like an expansion. And judging from the fact that he hasn't built a bunker, that he hasn't rushed the machine shop to get a tank out really early, uh, is indicative of the fact that he thinks this is an expansion. Well, this is an interesting move from Sock to build that factory so low. If he puts an add-on down, Scan might come in here, see one factory, and think, wow, this is going to be starport follow-up and build an armory yeah. that he doesn't really want. So clever move with this factory. Now, this third factory that's going up may have been a little bit too close, and Scan may realize that, hey, there's definitely no starport now. So I would have liked it to be a little bit lower towards the bottom side of the map to kind of mind game. Now, these vultures are coming in. It's three versus two right now. Landed racks, and now units. I don't oh, think he has they're to repair. Gonna... Yeah, he's got to repair, but he can't. Oh my god, that was so close. Uh, Sock almost... Well, I'm actually surprised he, he, I am he also, left there. I am also what? surprised because he had the magic number of vultures, which is three. You one-shot yeah. every single SCV, and it was only one vulture. That was a gift from Sock to Scan to not just end this game. Yeah, 100%. That was really weird. That was really weird that he just left there. That was a huge blunder, man. Like, he could have killed three, four SCVs at least. So, that's so uncharacteristic to see, especially in ASL. But uh, it is what it is. Sock did pull back. He is playing uh, defensively. Maybe he... The thing is, I, maybe it's because Sock actually went for that three vulture play. You know, the machine shop is actually delayed in that situation. So... Perhaps he was actually anticipating a really fast Vulture speed from Scan and didn't want to lose the Vultures out on the map because obviously in Vulture Wars, I mean, sure, you can kill a couple of SCVs there, but once you lose your S your Vultures, you're, you're forced into making tanks, you're forced into giving up the contest, or, uh, the contest for the map control. So yeah, you can kind of understand Sock pulling back there, even though uh, definitely he could have been justified in killing those SCVs instead of trading vultures for SCVs, but that is going to be four factories for both players, so both of these guys committing to the vulture play. We do see that Sock has a slight advantage now, just up four supply. We don't know if it's reflected in the worker count or in the vulture count. I have a feeling that it's actually in the worker count because Scan had his uh, second and third factory up a little bit faster, but he did lose those first couple of vultures, so maybe it is just actually in the vulture count now it is dead even you can see that scan has i think four factories also sock four factories so pretty much identical builds oh, that, yeah, you can that, see socks play dude i love how sock is playing he had the rack spot the high ground before he moved in scan is going to go for a counter attack this is almost like zvz basically Looks like Sock knows he has more vultures. This is looking really bad for Scan, actually, because now Scan gives away the high ground there. But Sock is being a bit over-aggressive. Attacking into vultures is never what you want to do because I, it's oh such gosh. a huge... Well, couple of scan, a couple of Scan vultures inside of Sock's base. Going to kill a couple of SEVs there. Uh, yeah. But still Sock in a good spot. Yeah, unfortunately for Scan, there was just way too much reinforcing vultures that popped out of those factories. Did deny those probably three vultures from getting in and dealing any uh, meaningful amount of damage to the SCV line. Both players have not taken their gas just yet. They are just going really hard on the vulture count. You can see that now Sock has mines all over the place. Meanwhile, he hasn't started his academy at all. So he wasn't really looking to go for a killing blow with a tank push at any point. But 
Scan was, so he's already got his comm sat about done. He'll be looking to move out pretty soon. But this is so many vultures. If he moves out, he could just get instantly counterattacked and just lose everything. Yeah, and this is why winning vulture... Well, it looks like Scan is going to move out here. I don't think Sock is going to take a fight. I mean, he is going to fight, but this is half his vultures, basically. So Scan is going to take that fight. No tanks, though. The Sock reinforces this fight here with his own vultures and it looks like tank siege tank is not done yet so scan can't really push out and this is why it feels bad to lose uh vulture wars in tvt i mean you know it's important to transition into tanks and the player that does it earlier is gonna have more tanks and generally you can get the second gas up faster but it looks like they both have same gas timings but the thing is look sock has mines all over the place and it's just he has so much vision he has so much tempo it's hard to push out of this as scan. Yeah, Sock has just complete map control. He started building his third command center. Scan's pushing out with tanks and siege mode, but he had to invest a lot just to simply get out of his natural. Yeah, and he has to push out because the thing is, there's a, a ticking time bomb here for scan that if Sock ever gets a couple of siege tanks into position with these binds, it's game over, you know, if the contain goes off here. So Scan is pressured to push up and against this double high ground, it can be extremely difficult. So again, another reason why vultures are so important in this early game. Looks like Scan's going to do it cleanly though and kills one tank as well. Man, Scan's playing really well. Yeah, that was really, really good and a crucial moment to get onto this high ground just in the nick of time. Now what he doesn't have is he doesn't have Rax vision that Sock does and there you can see the advantage right there. Oh, oh no. no, tanks bleed in. Oh no, the mine. Oh, and that's devastating. The still another tank is going to get picked off and you can see the power of just having vision just barely for a few seconds. Scan loses three tanks for one. That was so unfortunate for Scan. He had everything was going so well and losing those tanks. He even has to build the command center off center. Sock gonna unseize, seize his opportunity, especially with the high ground advantage. He's gonna push into Scan's position here. And without tanks, Scan can't really hold this. And there's some Goliaths supplementing the Vulture Force as well. And oh my god, Sock, the thing is, if he starts sieging up here, it's gonna be game over because Scan can't take his third base. And this is why positioning is so important in TVT. You can see how punishing even just having one or two tanks is on high ground comboed with vision advantage. There's, oh, okay, Scan does have his racks actually floating over the tanks and vultures now. However, there's a Goliath that's going to pick it off. There's a Wraith coming out, but that's really not the unit that you want at this stage in the game. You want to have more tanks. You can see that Scan's trying to slowly creep, but that tank's not in range either of those other tanks. Yeah, well, this Wraith is going to be nice. Uh, I don't think Sock still has uh, or has Goliath range yet. That looks like it's upgrading just now. So this Wraith is going to get some advantage here for Scan in that, you know, Sock doesn't have as much vision anymore. Yeah, but how do you but get out? But this is do or die. I mean, he has to go. He, he's pulling all the Vultures. Sock has Vultures of his own. And oh the thing is, all the tanks from Scan go down. And yeah... Yeah, and this is why people were saying Sock is a monster TBT. Like, he didn't even have that many vultures supporting the tanks, and he still cleaned up everything. And this is probably the last chance for Scan to make it back into this game. If he gets if he gets denied again, it's pretty much unrecoverable. Sock has three bases up and running. He's gonna be start he's gonna start taking a fourth base. He can even start expanding towards Scan, and that makes the pressure even more immense. Luckily, Scan takes down another tank on the top side. He still has barracks and vision advantage for now, so you can see he's going to slowly creep down, try and pick off these couple forward tanks, but he's got to make sure he doesn't get too close. Yeah, well, more units coming in here from Sock. Scan's doing a good job picking off a couple of tanks here and there, but again, look, Sock doesn't really care. He's denying this third base for such a long time Sock's been mining from his third base from forever it looks like scan is pulling the trigger he's gonna push out he has a lot of tanks here against just the four tanks from uh sock so if scan actually cleans this up without losing any tanks he does lose one there but that was a sick trade from scan finally getting his third base online and it looks like the supplies aren't too different sock Kind of lacking in macro a bit this game you can see his minerals are getting a bit out of hand he definitely could have expanded more 
maybe he could have added more factories, and it looks like Scan, he is going to get back into this game. Yeah, this is one of the points in the game where you just start thinking to yourself, what happened? And what happened was Sock didn't build tanks. He, he seems like he has three. Meanwhile, Scan is pumping out tanks nonstop. You can see it reflected in the gas. Sock has five to 600 more gas. Meanwhile, I think he has maybe one or two more factories than Scan. So that's another potential tank down the drain because he built an additional factory. Oh no, you cannot bleed those oh. tanks off. If he loses that, those are all the tanks. Wait, Scan's doing it almost. I mean, th there's a lot of vultures that get on top. If they get on top of Scan's tanks oh and my build, gosh. put oh down my a gosh. bunch of mines, this could be a disaster if the tanks don't shoot the mines down before they go off. Okay, that's not too bad for Scan. Remember, he did kill a bunch of those tanks, and now Scan's also expanding to his fourth base. So really, this game's evened out. Yeah, and he has that Wraith, remember. I don't know where it is, but he should have it. That means he's going to have vision as he moves across the map. But this is what he needed because he had no map control. He was map, he was contained really hard. Behind this, he's doing exactly what you should do. He's taking a fourth base. He's expanding towards Sock. Now, Scan is the one that has map control going through the center of the map. And these chokes are tiny. So Sock is really the only, op only way he can get through the map is trying to go through the center. If he goes through the left side and even like two or three tanks are on high ground over there, Scan's going to trade so effectively. And Sock realizes the spawn advantage for scan you can see he's building mass turrets all through his base yeah that's uh, definitely a good point now it looks like sock does have plus one finished and his science facility just finished so he's gonna get up to plus two we saw scan didn't quite have plus one just yet he doesn't have plus one yet uh so the upgrade advantage is gonna be so important in this matchup i mean plus two makes such a such a world of difference when your tanks can two-shot the opposing tank. So that's definitely another thing that's going in Sock's favor still. Double star port from Scan. And generally you would expect that that's going to be for Wraiths. But it might also be for dropships at this point in time. Because both players are getting up to four bases. And it's getting quite late into the game. This is really when you start having an economy. First of all, you need an economy to support the star ports. But also you need to have enough factories to have map control. So... Once the game kind of even like fizzles out in this stage of the game, dropships become so important. Sock's in trouble, especially if tanks get set up on this right side. This looks like the one opportunity where Sock may be able to get out onto the map because tanks are just not set up in time. If Scan can reposition some tanks over there, he will be in an amazing position. He did have a couple race. There's, I don't see any anti-air over there. And you can see minimal defense on the left side, as I mentioned, because of how tiny those chokes are. And now Scan is setting defense on that high ground over there. And it looks like these tanks are kind of isolated. Vultures are over in no man's lands. They're going to go for a backstab. But Sock's going to lose four tanks. And he is losing all of his critical units. Vultures are great for harassment. But you got to have something to defend the middle of the map. Yeah, well, it looks like he's going to go into the natural from Scan, and this is going to be good for Sock because he's going to kill a couple of SVs as well, killing a couple of Vultures. Looks like Scan's going to bring back Wraiths. Yeah, double dropship production underway, but actually that attack from uh, from Sock did absolutely nothing. And, uh, wow, dude, <laughs> the tables have turned, man. Scan is in a massive lead. I mean, even with the double starboard there, doesn't look like looks like socks actually going triple starport wraith in, as a counter to this dropship play but uh look at i don't know i mean socks still has good supply yeah but yeah but scan realizes that the real threat is over on the left side since there's no tanks to defend so he instantly sends a reinforcing tank count over there oh race five race and only saw two for scan you can see that he has a few goliaths here he does have range too so they should be able to deal with them and it looks like maybe Sock is going to be denied. These mines have to connect. Well, this is still good. Oh, it's so close. That, that looked like such a sick timing from Sock with the wraiths coming in to clear a path. But look, Scan even built a turret in the middle of that. So the Scan's playing out of his mind. He has a bunch of turrets all over the place. He's reinforcing. Oh, no. This is a small ramp to push up on, but it looks like Sock, maybe is he going to find the timing? No, Scan does siege more tanks here and prevents Sock from assaulting from uh, from assaulting his fourth base. So that ramp is everything in this game. Yeah, but all the Goliaths died, and now there's nine race here, and there's no turret set up on those tanks either. There's no turret set up in the middle of the map. This is Sock's opportunity 
to change the tides in his favor. There's two Valkyries, but you need something to support them. And now these tanks are going to fall in the middle. And Scan is slowly but surely going to have to give up his map presence in the center of the map. Dude, this Wraith switch from Sock is absolutely incredible. Oh uh, my god, dude. Both, be both these players are so good at this matchup. Sock, though... He's going to pull back. He's still forcing the issue up this ramp. It looks like he's going to find a way up this ramp. And this is going to be a disaster for Scan because the thing is, not only is his fourth base uh, vulnerable, but if he gives up the main high ground, you know, his main high ground, then his third base is also vulnerable. Then his rallying is also vulnerable. So this is a terrible position to be in as Scan. Yeah, and those wraiths are still alive or should be alive. So they can move to the left side now and start taking out these tanks that are on the high ground. Fourth base is going to be killed. And there is a direct path up here to send SCVs. Plus two weapon kicked in. And as you mentioned, huge breakpoint in TVT. It looks like Scan just doesn't have enough to fend this off. Oh, maybe the wraiths were killed by these couple wraiths and two Valkyries? No, I don't think so. I, I, no, no, you can see uh, Sock actually has his wraiths flying in moment momentarily here scan is trying to go for a race of his own he realized that the dropship play is not going to cut it against triple starport here from sock so oh my god this is so close it's such a close game but sock he is getting a huge advantage by getting this position fortunately for scan though he does salvage the high ground so you know he is going to lose this fourth base but at least he's not going to lose his third base at least he's not going to lose his high ground and he has the base in the middle there and he can start expanding to the top right so definitely some counter or the game can go on for scan but i mean sock no oh, this is so weird man i mean scan has like the positional advantage in the middle of the map but sock has more units and he has the air advantage so he can expand to bottom right yeah, and now these tanks in the center are going to be picked off, and there's only four, so Sokka's is just going to send everything in. Now, if those Valkyries can Valkyries. connect, he's going to deal a lot of damage, but they really don't connect that well. And Scan is going to lose the middle of the map, and you can see that Sock has already expanded to bottom right, so he's already attempting to split this. Yeah, well, I'm curious to see. I mean, I hope Scan's actually building some more wraiths or some more valkyries or something it doesn't seem like goliaths are gonna cut it against sock looks like scan's getting some sick trades though on top of those tanks so okay and he cleared up somehow he holds on to this fourth base what's going on in this game dude yeah and look at the supply it's 180 to 170 scan has plus two weapon himself he doesn't have armor but he's got the critical breakpoint scvs are being transferred to mid right are they going to get intercepted by these units on the high ground. I it's just a don't huge think so. blunder. Dude, if Sock doesn't prevent this base from mining, that was a huge blunder for him. From him. Looks like the vultures do get into position to keep... Well, the, the reality is what's important is to, to deny that gas. But it looks like there's plenty of gas bases. I mean, I, it looks like every single map on... Or every single base on this map has a gas, Nyok. And so... That's not something you see every day where Scan actually needs more minerals than he needs gas. Uh, but it looks like, obviously, Sock finally denying this base from Scan. And he's starting to take bottom right, the entirety of bottom right. And, you know, on a map like this, Wraiths can be so strong because, you know, given the architecture, it's hard to maneuver around Goliaths. Oh, well, all those Wraiths are coming in. There. There's only two Goliaths and one of them took a massive tank shot so that's the only goliath that's going to remain don't know where the race and valkyries are it looks like scan is sending them through the center of the map but meanwhile these tanks are going to be taken oh that's four valkyries so yeah you got to be very careful with those fragile race but as you said bottom right is being taken that's going to be the sixth and seventh base going up for sock if we just get a count on the map right now Scan has six of them. He can attempt to take mid-right, and then I guess probably that bottom left base is going to be contested. Okay, another attack in the middle of the map. Race versus Goliath. This might be a bit of an overstep. Well, Scan has four Valkyries, like you said, so this is going to be really good for him to wrestle back uh, air control. And really, air control is what's allowing Sock to expand to bottom right. So, honestly, if Scan somehow... Well, looks like it's not going to be the case looks like they're just going to stabilize and the map is getting split in half here and quick base count now i mean who do you think is ahead uh if they just completely split this map i think it's even because i don't see how any player can get 
the base right outside of Sock's base. A scan can just sit on the high ground and deny it. So I think this is just an even scenario. Now Sock is throwing away SCVs, and I'm not too sure about this because, yeah, he's going to have a bigger army, but I don't feel like he has mined enough of the map to be doing this. Yeah, and generally you see that uh, into battle cruisers or something. Oh, oh there big we go. drop! Didn't use. I was gonna say, where are the rates? Where's the air from Sock? Looks like he just transitioned into dropship play, and that's gonna be his spike here. These Valkyries are totally useless. There's a couple of Goliaths supporting this too, but the high ground's gonna help scan a tremendous amount though. So I don't know about this move from Sock actually. Sock trying to get into this base to try and deny two bases at once, but that's gonna be a huge overextension. Yeah, he loses all of his tanks, and I didn't see a single tank fall for scan. Meanwhile, really nice uh, recognition that there's probably going to be action on the right side. Instantly denies those race as soon as they come in cloaked. And he's going to come back and save this bottom left base. And now, scan's also been shown that, hey, not only did you sacrifice like 15 SCVs, you also have seven dropships in the air that are kind of dead weight. I, I, with these mass Valkyries and mass Wraith, they should be able to be picked off quite easily i guess he's got three drop ships of his own that are kind of dead weight but yeah I, i'm i'm surprised that sock threw those scvs like i said because he's not battle cruiser switching there's no mass starport anywhere there's no uh what is it called the add-on for the science facility well that's a lot of drop ships though and uh yeah but he's gonna scans... find them where are those race yeah, I don't know. I mean, it looks like Scan's just getting into such a sick position. He's going to wrestle some of this mid-map control back. Oh but Sock oh is flying God. through, and he's going to go straight for the main. And yeah, honestly, the this can be a game. The Wraith and the Valkyries are so close, but there's no... There's not enough... They're not in time. And all of the units are going to unload in the main of oh Scan. And that was a probably a game-winning move for Sock. Now, what does Scan do in response? I actually expect him to just go for it. Yeah, he has to do something. The thing is, he's going to lose all his blocked. depots. I mean, that's it. He can't make more units. So, uh, looks like he's going to counter drop. Yeah, this is really all you can do is try and defend your main base. It doesn't seem like he would have much success doing anything else. But he already lost so many draw or so many depots. It's going to be so long before he can rebuild these units. Dropping on top uh. of siege tanks, his units get completely obliterated. And what was looking like we were going into kind of a 30 40 50 minute split map tvt it just ended in one fell sweep from sock with that drop yeah and i thought that those valkyries were gonna get back in time but they were over on the left side of the map clearing out that fourth base and sock recognized that so he just went for the throat and because scan is supply block he can't build any units and because of that he's got to send everything back just to defend it Meanwhile, tanks are going to be unloaded on the high ground on the fourth base. Finally, these dropships might get cleared out. But now Scan's going to lose his fourth base. He just taps out. Oh, There's GG. way too much for Sock. And unfortunately, Scan is going to be eliminated. But he had one heck of a comeback after that brutal contain from Sock in the beginning. Uh, that should have been game over, honestly. Uh, Sock should be... Uh... <laughs> I mean, he's probably elated after that because he threw away a massive advantage. There was no... I, I can't believe Scan actually got back into that game. And he almost won. He was ahead uh, until that drop happened. Yeah, at worst, he was even versus Sock. They had six base versus six base. Upgrades were slightly in, in Sock's advantage. But he really didn't have that great of econ. As I said, he wasn't BC switching. I didn't see mass armories anywhere, so he wasn't even upgrading air. So he kind of got very lucky with that drop. But regardless, he's going to be moving on to the deciders match. And we're going to have a rematch of Shuttle versus Sock to figure out who makes it out as our second place finisher in Group D. Yeah. Is that it? Dude. I mean, uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> I just want to make sure that we don't le leave too much dead air here. But yeah, dude, that map, yeah, it's going to be soon. That map is so crazy for vulture openings. But yeah, Sock coming out on top. Don't go anywhere, guys. Last game coming up soon. Oh. 
Looks like oh. we're going to have a Hot 6 commercial now. We got debated. Remind me who the guy on the left is? Is that, is that Kim, Kim Carrier? Kim Carrier? <laughs> no, all these guys are actually... They've been casting forever, man. Like, uh, I'm actually kind of sad that... I don't know all their names by heart, but... You know... And that guy in the the guy in the middle, I like his slick white suit. We should get one of those for uh Yeah, for I told you that's me. <laughs> that's or, you. okay. Yeah. You're the two you split into two. I, I remain as two. one. Okay. Yeah. Well, Th that doesn't look like hot six, bro. That no, looks like I, I the think, king. I, I think it's a flavor of hot six. I guess I right. could Google yeah. it and see exactly what it is. I can tell you in Korea I have not seen this particular hot six in the aisles i've seen all of the uh, have you tried hot six no i haven't tried any of the oh my God. all any of the beverages you're killing you starcraft man i know i should check it out yeah you should check it out you should check it out check out the king uh you know they're talking about how they drink this stuff non-stop during the cast that's why they're so hype and uh i need some of that dan Oh, they're comparing cans now. Look, I got the white one. Yeah, oh, yeah, look at me. I got the blue one. Oh, yeah, when I drink this, I just fist people down. I think I'm going to have to ask Scan and other, uh, like like uh, Steve, for recommendations on which hot six is the best. Should I get the king? Should I get a different flavor? Yeah. There's well, you, you know, there's a convenience store right next to my house. So maybe after this is over, I'll go and buy one and I'll get back to you guys on which one is the best. Well, cheers, guys. Uh, we're also drinking hot six in our minds. I I know it's really good. Oh, my God, that tastes amazing. I got the I got the black one because you got red, white, and red, white, blue. And blue. <laughs> Damn. Red, white, and blue. Well, I got the black one, dude, and I'm pumped. For this last game. Yeah, sock versus shuttle. Oh, it's going to be an ad. Here we go.
now it is time to figure out who's going to be our last finisher from group d polypoid is going to be our map choice it's going to be another tvp a rematch of game two of the day it's going to be shuttle versus sock damn look at that shuttle banned <laughs> fighting spear. is he crazy why would you ban that i'm sure artosis would, will go ballistic when he sees this <laughs> When he when he finally casts these games, he'd be like, "Okay, I guess he just he didn't want a free win." <laughs> yeah, can't wait to see that one. But it is going to be the final game here: Sock versus Shuttle, a rematch of their game. Oh, you know, earlier so today. Oh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. I I, I didn't want to forget this. Earlier today, I was watching Hartosis' stream, and you know what he said about Polypoid. He said it's yeah. taking the fourth base is basically like taking your third base on Fighting Spirit. Protoss can just literally sit there and deny it forever. So either way, I guess Shuttle got a free win here denying a base. And let's see if he can turn this <laughs> this map choice into a victory. It's going to be Polypoid, Shuttle versus Sock. Winner here makes it into the round of 16. Loser is eliminated. Damn, this is some epic, epic music. I'm, I wish one of the players had picked that. That loading screen <laughs> yeah. music. Some Dragon Force thing. Yeah. Get into the game, guys. In the top right, our red Protoss player. It is Shuttle. And in the top left, blue Terran. It is Sock. I, I just love how they uh, <laughs> how they spam the chat channel. Like, there's a barcode spamming the channel that was clearly some production because they don't want to. They don't want people to read what they were chatting. Because you saw Sock before the game started. Sock and Shuttle were both laughing, so you know they're talking to some garbage there yeah they probably were the only chat that i recognized there was the uh the observer saying that they were starting now yeah. i think sock probably isn't feeling too well because even though he won last game that was a position that i think he knows he kind of got lucky with and remember he's already lost to shuttle so i'm hoping that he's not kind of thrown off from earlier stages of the day. Now let's see what Shuttle and Sockboat opt for looks like so far. No. Or, well, or I guess we're going to find out what Shuttle opts for in just a second because he's about to have 150 minerals. Meanwhile, Sock not doing anything crazy. No 10-10-10. Uh-oh. No gateway. Yep. Yep. I was going to say. Well, it is going to be that 12 Nexus. A sick build on this map, to be completely honest with you. High high probability that Terran goes for... Well, did he even... Sock's not even building a gas. Yeah, this is going to be... Oh, no, no, it's still early. It's still early. It's going to be a 12, 12 scout, 13 gas for sure. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. It could have been also one of those hybrid builds that Light likes to use where he gets something like a 14 or a 15 gas. Oh, look at this, Nye. He's going to scout him first. Is that a thing? Do Terrans ever get to scout the Protoss player first? It looks like it's <laughs> actually going to happen in this particular game. It's probably because the Terran player isn't Artosis. You think that's yeah, true? Yeah, probably. Oh, he Something finds like it. And did he... Did the pro? I know that the probe went that direction, but it kind of looks like it went towards the bottom. I'm not sure if the probe actually intercepted that SCG. It was very close. It was very, very close. Well, I, I think it did... Because, well, we'll have to see. I mean, Protoss is going to first scout... Sock and that's that's a that's a feels bad moment as the Protoss player. You first scout Terran, you see that they have racks plus gas going. You know a factory's gonna come up here. Well, this factory's a bit late. He's actually gonna delay the factory. Okay, that's an interesting decision. He delayed the factory to get the second marine out and running. So apparently that's more important than getting your vulture out early. And yeah, you can see nonstop marine production. So he is gonna punish this Nexus. It's gonna be really hard. 
for Shuttle to hold on to it. And you can see Shuttle's actually just on one gate still. Maybe he didn't see that SCV Nyokin, and he thinks that the Terran hasn't yet scouted him, which is the only reason he would still be on one gate. Bunker going up for Sock. You know, in this situation, you can actually leapfrog bunkers. It's so strong. One Zealot out. I don't know how Shuttle's going to hold on to this, man. Well, so far he's done a good job. He's gotten that SCV within one shot range of the Zealot. He's got to be very close because he's playing with fire right now. If that Zealot gets hands on him like he did right there, goodbye SCV. And now this bunker is going to be denied and everything's going poorly extreme. Oh, wow. He didn't even send a lot of SCVs with it. So he was really expecting that bunker to get up. Oh, that no. was so greedy from Sock. He was hinging all his bets on that bunker. You know, usually you would see a train of SCVs on the way there, but the thing is, when you build that bunker, you kind of need to keep mining because you need that third depot as well. And the third depot plus the bunker plus marines plus vultures costs a lot. But for Sock, I mean, it's still one gate here for, for Shuttle. So how is he going to defend this follow-up attack? A couple SCVs here with the marines are going to get it on top of the Zealot. He is trying to build a bunker, microing that SCV out, but the vulture comes in, one vulture, five marines versus two zealots and one dragoon the bunker does go down these zealots are gonna evaporate and one dragoon's not gonna cut it but the thing is the scvs do die here and not too many probes have died so if shuttle just runs his probes away doesn't lose too many just waits for goon range this could be fine for him oh look at this control with the marines he lost none there he does get a couple of probes on the way back but he is going to lose this nexus supplies are very close you suspect that two goons are in production so it should be pretty much even once another cycle comes out from terran meanwhile sock didn't well i mean he did pull a few scvs he did also lose what like four or five so it's not like he took no losses here but he is in a decent position mines are going to be coming in pretty soon no you cannot lose those ultras those are your saving grace once this bunker gets inevitably busted, he's going to try and run by. Yeah. Oh my gosh, he actually gets... Oh, look, he was trying to get the SCV on the ramp so he can kill these three goons. Nicely done from from Sock right there. Or a nice attempt there. He picks off one of them. Yeah, but, you know, to be honest, this isn't too bad for the Protoss player because really uh, no probes went down there. And Sock lost quite a lot of SCVs bunker rushing this, so... And it looks like the bunker is going to go down before you can see Sock actually went for the tank. He was trying to bring the tank here to complement, to support rather the bunker. But because the bunker goes down, Shuttle's going to be able to expand. Now Sock's expansion is at a good timing here. Overall, this is obviously a decent situation for Terran. Uh, killing a Nexus, you know, no doubt. But the reality is this is fine for Protoss. Yeah, Protoss just going to put down their Nexus again, but he is got to be careful dancing around those mines. They are a little bit too far back for the tank to feel comfortable pushing farther in. Now, that is a barracks floating across the map, and I'm hoping that Sock realizes that that was a misclick, and we don't see him just run in here and lose his racks, because that would be devastating. He's going to be forced to put down his Academy ASAP. Okay, now he sees it. I'm like sitting here watching like, oh my god, am I about to watch <laughs> yeah. the this Terran just throw the game away by losing his barracks, but luckily he turns it around. Yeah, and Sog being really cheeky with his tank. Obs is out though. If Okay, he sees the blur. He knows I got to get out of here. He is going to have a bunker at his natural. Hopefully he saved a couple of marines. Uh, I think he did. These vultures are going to kind of chill around here. Just make sure that the Dragoons don't push too fast. Of course, Protoss has to be wary of vultures running by when they move out with the goon force. But uh, Sock is in a really nice spot, though. His expansion did finish basically earlier than the Protoss. I would suspect Protoss still has a slight worker lead, but uh, maybe not even because with the two gate and the robotics, sometimes you might want to cut some probes here, so... This is uh, this is a really good spot for Terran. Terran does have the bunker. He does have three tanks. There's no way Protoss is going to be comfortable just trying to dive onto a couple of these tanks. That vulture got pushed away before it could spot the third nexus, but it may have seen the probe sitting up there. So he may have a clue as to what's going on. Meanwhile, it's going to be a support bay follow-up. And because of the commitment in the early stages, 
Sock doesn't have that much, and he even rushed a super fast armory. Plus one is already going, and his second factory just started. Yeah, I like this though from Sock. He has enough tanks to defend. Getting that armory up early is so important in this matchup, and that was uh, definitely a detriment to his game. The last game these two guys played, where he was stuck on that six factory with, well, he went for that four factory build and just didn't have any upgrades. So Sock playing a completely different style. He is going to get the starboard way earlier uh, than he needs to, though. Though, I mean, here's the thing. That starboard timing is for dropships, without a doubt, because otherwise Sock would have went for triple factory right away. But in any case, he is going to need the starboard sooner or later because of his early upgrade. So this is a, this is a nice build. We're going to see some uh, vulture drops coming in here, but we'll have to see. Uh, I mean, against the shuttle, it is going to be hard. Yep, shuttle is out. Reaver is going to be coming pretty soon. Super fast starport already coming down for Sock. He is going into that very quick 2-1 style. We don't see any more tech from shuttle just yet. No citadel anywhere. No gateway flood. No stargate anywhere. It looks like he is just going to be playing gateway man comboed with Reaver for now. I think he's got a probe sitting at mid right, so that's gonna be a fourth base coming down for him pretty soon. And there is a, well, I think another factory may even come in for Sock since he is such so low on unit count. Damn, that's crazy. He's actually going up to four factories here. It almost looked like he was gearing up for a timing, but I mean, when you got a science facility up, he has so many tanks too. Second armory and the control tower really early. Yeah, I'm skeptical about the control tower. Luckily, it's not a very expensive building, but if he builds a vessel, that's going to be almost 300 gas. That could have been three tanks. That would be very surprising. But maybe he just wants to rush that vessel and go for some type of 2-1 timing, potentially. He doesn't have to build a command center here. I don't see it being built anywhere. That is an eBay at the bottom side of his base. How... What are the uh, chances you think that we're going to see some kind of 7 factory build here? <laughs> well, I think it's getting higher the more, the longer it goes, of course. We, oh, that's a dropship, okay. If that was a vessel, it's 100% going to be a timing. But now that it is a dropship, we may see a command center. But I feel like command center's got to be coming down pretty soon. Yeah, it's getting pretty late in this dropship, though. Like, that's a in these situ Sorry, that's another factory in his main. Yeah, well, that drop, somehow, I don't think Shuttle actually noticed the drop as it was skirting to the 12 o'clock there, so looks like the dropship did unload the vultures, so Sock thinking better than to just uh, run the dropship straight into the Protoss' main, but they are going to get some nice connections here onto the third base, and a lot of probes are, well, a couple of probes are going to go down, but that was definitely well defended from Shuttle. Overall, though, this is looking really good. For the Protoss player, I mean... Oh, that's a Okay, command no, center. that's a command center. I thought it was a factory, because <laughs> why is it being built there? I guess he wants to just hide it from the Observer, maybe force Shuttle into thinking that this is actually a timing. Back in the main of Shuttle, I don't see... Oh, man, goodbye, dropship. I don't see a building that's in position like it's going to be a Stargate. So this is more than likely just going to be more Templar Gateway Man style. 50 supply lead shuttle we already saw him dismantle sock earlier when he only had a 20 supply lead and this is just looking even better and there's two reavers just sitting outside of his base yeah double reaver here can buy so much time for the protoss player and it's so hard to take your third base against this it's so so incredibly hard uh luckily for sock he does have four factories and looks like he actually has gone up to up to six factories so if he executes right, I mean, the thing is, look, the gateways are completed. There is a Templar Archive Citadel already done. So by the time he, yeah, he, by the time Sog pushes out here, this is going to be really hard, man. I mean, Zealots, Goons, Reavers, Shuttle Speed, even Templar. How do you take your base here? Especially up going up high ground. Looks like Sock lost his opportunity to go for a, for a big time factory flood and pump out a ton of units. And now he's going to struggle to take this base. I feel like I'm seeing a repeat of the Snow scan game where these Reavers just deny the base forever. Meanwhile, Snow took so many bases. Now 
Shuttle has Storm available. He still has the Reavers alive. He's got all of his tech pretty much up and running other than the Stargate and the Arbiter. And it looks like he's even starting to take bottom right at this point. Yeah, but Sock looks like he might... Well, this is going to be uh, the deciding uh, moment in this game. Can Sock take this third base? I mean, he does have plus two upgrades. Oh my god, those goons are going to go in and just kind of suicide before the fight. They do bait out the D-Matrix. That's not irrelevant. I mean, D-Matrix is a very potent spell. But I don't know. That's not too many goons. It's a lot of zealots. Yeah, this army comp is not exactly what you want for Protoss. However, because Sok is tank heavy, this isn't this isn't bad. I think that the Zealots could get on top of the majority of the tanks. Now, these Vultures kind of just bled out for minimal probe kills. Those will be rebuilt very quickly. Well, we'll have to see. I mean, Sok is taking his time. He's playing this well. This is exactly what he needs to do as Terran. Just delay that third. You know, don't panic. You have upgrades coming. It's all about just not losing the game. And that's a lot of tanks. That's a huge minefield. A bunch of vultures. So Sock playing this brilli brilliantly. Finally getting his third base up and running. Protoss not quite on five bases just yet. And we know that Protoss doesn't have a Stargate. So really all Protoss has right now is this attack. He has to get some damage here. Look at this comp. It's like 80% Zealots. Here he goes. He's going to try and bust through. But Zealots are just eating the mines. Look at how much damage they're dealing. As you mentioned, there's no D-Matrix now. That's a great storm on a, a lot of the units. But look at shuttle supply go from near max all the way down to even with Sock right yeah. now. Looks like the third base may... Oh, nope. It's not going to be denied. It is just going to be lifted temporarily. And now Sock is going to get his third base up and running. Yeah, and not just that, but Sock's got upgrades. He's got six factories. Uh, getting this third base mining is going to be super important. Now, the one thing that's really bad about Sock's position here is the fourth base is going to be quite tricky to take. 12 o'clock oh. is... Oh my god, that mine connection. The thing is, Sock has to expand at 12 o'clock. Uh, but there's a pylon there. It's going to be annoying to take. Uh, but the fourth base is going to be a bit annoying. Uh, yeah, as I keep saying that it is going to be annoying. I mean, basically, I, I'm sounding like Artosis. This fourth base is going to be so hard to take, like on Fighting Spear, the third base. So, really, but if Sock gets up to four bases, I mean, that's that's going to be phenomenal for him. Yeah, but it seems like he's taking a really long time to get to four bases. It's approaching 17 minutes, which is when you kind of mine out your main. That's going to be a Zealot Storm drop probably onto this. Oh, the Reaver's still alive. He's going to take out a tank. Oh, wow. Sock's just going oh for it. God. I can't believe he got all the way across the map. What are Shuttle's units doing all the way on the bottom left? Here he's going to try and come in, but there's really not that much army. Vultures get on top of the Templars, and those storms were not great. Meanwhile, those units in the back bled in a few goons, and Sock is easily going to crush this third base. However, Sock's third base has also been taken out. This attack from Sock is so unexpected, and I think it caught Shuttle off guard, totally unaware that the units were moving there. There are no OBS, you can see, kind of in that track there. Um, I mean, Sock did have a vessel, so maybe some Goliaths with the vessels kind of uh, pushed out the OBS, but it doesn't look like Sock has any Goliaths. So Sock went in there, slapped the Nexus out of existence, and now he's pushing, or he's pulling back. So that was a slick move from him, not committing to this attack. He realizes, okay, I'm just on 130, 140 supply. Uh, I mean, obviously, Terran with 2-1 is really strong, but you have to get to a certain supply threshold for your army to be really efficient. So I like the fact that he did not commit to that attack and he just pulled back. But again, the question is, Sok, where are you going to take your fourth base? Yeah, I think he has to go mid-left. Meanwhile, Vultures get to bottom right. See that there is no gateway flood just yet. So that should be... Uh, making him feel a little bit better that he doesn't have to deal with, you know, 20, 25 gates just yet. Supplies are pretty much dead even, but as I said, Main and Nat are going to be mining out pretty soon for Sock, so he's desperate to get another base. He could even take top middle. That would, if he builds turrets there, it would deny, you know, Arbiters from getting into the natural very easily, so that's a potential spot for him. Yeah, we'll have to see here. Looks like Sock is putting down a bunch of vultures, or mines rather, in the middle of the map. And yeah, this is important, obviously, for Terran to kind of run out of the vultures, just mine it up, and it's... Oh my god! That one mine actually ex exploded a bunch of other mines. 
Uh, it's important for Protoss to continuously clear these minefields, but it can be really tricky with the Observer and the Dragoon, so... More vultures going into bottom right. You can see the invisible man sitting there and waiting. That's a lot of cannons. And I think that these vultures are not going to be uh, very effective taking out those probes. Maybe he took like out three, but he lost like eight of them. So kind of a not a worthwhile trade. However, it does free up some supply to build more tanks. But still, I don't see a fourth base for Sock. He really needs to start thinking about getting one. He is basically max. But he's going to be down to one base pretty soon. He is going to be down to one base. Okay, killing a lot of Templar. These Templar are going to be so important for Protoss. You can see that Shuttle does not seem to be interested to tech into Stargate. That's the one... I mean, it's going to be really scary for him to face this uh, heavily upgraded Terran army. We're getting into 18, 19 minutes. So you could only suspect that Sok is basically waiting for 3-2. And just maxing off of these three bases. Killing some more... Templar and I mean every Templar counts Nyokin because okay well here comes oh. a storm drop they don't even get the storm yeah that was a failed shuttle harassment right there and Sock does have plus three I saw when they clicked the vulture that he has plus three weapon plus one armor supplies are still dangerously close for the Protoss player also with no bank he's got to be very careful with his units in any single trade it looks like Sock is ready to move out while he moves and pushed pushes out to take out this mineral only it's also going to give him time to start taking top middle because i see a command center being built on the low ground wow he finds all of these isolated goons yeah and the uh, the three attack upgrade is going to be huge for him those zealots take a lot of the mine hits there not too many goons on oh this is uh, suicide yeah shuttle's composition you know when you're this heavy zealot composition it's kind of like <laughs> You just YOLO in and you hope that they trade really well and it can be super one-sided either way. Either the Terran completely demolishes your Zealots or you kill the Terran army. Storm going off onto Sox's main army. That's a sick D-Matrix. Nice Storm too. Double D-Matrix actually. And it looks like, well, Sock is kiting really well and all the Zealots die before anything really happens. So, Shuttle taking so much damage but he is trading somehow the storms are on point looks like Terran has gotten reduced to 130 supply and remember Terran's mined out in their main and their natural yeah that was a really good trade for Sock he's still gonna push through with these tanks it's only a 10 supply difference now I'm surprised that there were no EMPs I think that means that Sock must not have it and okay he's desperate to get onto the high ground he knows once tanks get up there it's gonna be a nightmare great storm on the front tight on the front tanks oh, no. and goons on the high ground oh maybe they just barely don't have enough another great storm into the back but it looks like sock is just barely not going to push through yeah those storms were killer and they just completely eradicate the tank count and sock i mean he has a couple more tanks he has seven more tanks here actually Macroing well, but the thing is he's running out of steam. We saw a command center go down, but it doesn't look like he cleared the 12 o'clock pylon out just yet. So it's going to be delayed even more. Protoss finally getting uh, up to basically six base, even though obviously uh, some of the bases have mined out. But this is a really good spot to be in as Protoss. All you have to do is buy some time and just make sure that you're remaxing and... I mean, what can Ter Terran's going to take 12 o'clock, which would be really good for him to secure. I mean, this game could still go on, and there's no Stargate still for Protoss. Yeah, this is the style that I really don't like that much versus the heavy upgrade style of Terran. Sure, shuttle harassment is great, but as I mentioned, they just build mass tank and eventually win the game. Now, those tanks are going to bleed out, not going to get any damage done. Sok is finally going to get top middle up and running. He is going to knock down this mineral only, too ranging the probes and protoss needs to start getting another base because he's going to be back down to two bases somewhat soon mid right is probably halfway mined out at this point yeah i mean this move from sock is sick though he's securing 12 o'clock while denying a protoss nexus so huge huge swing for him and it looks like honestly being down 10 supplies not bad especially when you have three two mech so Shuttle is running around. There is a Reaver there. It's actually quite surprising that uh, Protoss is still building Reavers at this point in the game, but they can be so, so, so effective 
at harassing bases. And now finally Sock gets his fourth base up and running. He will be able to get close and closer and closer to that Max Terran army. And then, I mean, Protoss is probably shaking in his boots right now. This is, I don't know, man. This is looking pretty good for Sock. It's still a 30 supply lead for the Protoss, though. Protoss has 3-2 upgrades, no shield upgrades at all. My opinion is that if you're going to go for heavy forge upgrades, you got to get all of them versus the Terran army. So 3-2 isn't going to be enough. That's a nice pickoff right there. Getting that vessel a very expensive unit. Sock, he's still on two bases, but his mineral only is going to be mining out pretty soon. Still worried that he's just not going to have enough econ to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Protoss, but top middle is very crucial for him. It also gives him that third gas because you know he's depleted in the main and natural. Yeah, that third gas is... I mean, it's kind of insane to me that he's been playing off of two gas this whole game, if you really think about it. So the third gas is going to be a huge, huge boost to his eco. Looks like he does have 3-2. And, uh... Yeah, I mean, this game is going to slow down a bit, but the thing is... Looks like Sock is gonna kill a bunch of goons. If Sock gets a fifth base here, that that's gonna be that's gonna spell disaster for Protoss. What I'm surprised that Shuttle hasn't done is he hasn't tried to even take bottom left. It's something that I talked about is where you have map control, take bottom left, it forces Terran to move out. But as I say that we've got a top middle bus with Zealots and Storm coming in through those shuttles. Looks like it's not gonna be enough because those D matrixes are great. That one tank is standing strong. But more reinforcing units coming in from Shuttle. Where are all of Sock's units? Where are those tanks that we were talking about just a moment ago? Oh no, the Storms are going to hit so many SCBs. He killed like 20 SCBs. Dude, Shuttle found the perfect angle there to attack Sock at. And he's going to deny this base. And that's going to be disastrous for Terran. It was looking alright for him, you know, just 30 seconds ago. And now it's looking disastrous. And... Uh, I mean, Sock's going to try and counterattack here with some vultures, lay some more mines. There, it's it's really hard to save this 12 o'clock when the Protoss basically has their units over the ramp there. So definitely smart move from Sock to not contest that. Instead, he's going to go for a counterattack of his own. Maybe he's going to try and kill this bottom right Nexus. But the thing is, I mean, Shuttle has a couple gates there as well. Uh, this is kind of desperation mode for Terran. Yet Terran can't do anything. If he pushes and he loses these tanks, it's over. He just doesn't have any way to rebuild them because his mineral only is about to mine out. That Templar should have full energy. You can see two storms coming out. Looks like he didn't have enough energy for a third one. DT gets wiped out. Nice dodge there. He needs some more Ooh. dodges like that, but he really needs to kill these goons when they come down. Shuttle's army isn't that big. The problem is, is that the majority of it is at top middle denying that fourth base. Yeah, he also has a lot of, yeah, there you go. He has a lot of units at his rally point. That is a lot of Templar with Shuttle. And uh, it looks like, I mean, this counterattack from Sock was nice. He's going to kill this Nexus, but the reality is, I mean, Shuttle is still mining off of three base, whereas Terran is mining off of just the mineral only. So you can see the supplies getting super, super. This is it. Uh, yeah. Well, this Looks is, like Shuttle's just going to go for the attack. Yeah, this is going to be the last stand from Sock, and I just don't see how... Oh, that's a great MP. I don't see how Sock survives this. Tanks? Oh, he does. Holy moly, those tanks in the back shelling out so much damage, but he's still down 60 supply. Remember, Shuttle still has all those units at the top middle, so his attack right there is not as big as it should have been. I mean, that is 3-2... Uh, <laughs> that is 3-2 mech. It's nuts. Looks like 313 are the upgrades for Protoss. So close, you know, slowly but surely getting to that 333 that you were talking about, Nayakin, but not quite there. And Sock somehow, despite the fact that there's gates at bottom right, he makes it into the base. Again, he's on his dying breath, though. Look, Sock's not even mining anymore. He has no more econ. This is all the units that he has left. Yeah, this is make or break for him. And with all those tanks going down, that's half of the army really at bottom right. So he either needs to reinforce it or they're just going to be wiped out in an instant. Looks like for now, Shuttle's a bit worried about trying to contest this. The command center is floating to mid left, but of course Shuttle's going to see it because he has an observer sitting over there or a pylon. 
But that is a dead bottom right base. However, now Shuttle is sending his entire army. And he is going to easily wipe this out. But this was a lot of damage done. I mean, Shuttle has a huge army. He is going to lose bottom right. But at this point, it, it's hard. You know, being in Shuttle's shoes, you don't quite know how much steam is left for the Terran player. The DT is spotting this command center so he knows what's going on he knows where the product or the terran is expanding shuttle's gonna come in here clean up these tanks so he will be able to re-expand to the bottom right but you have to wonder i mean what's the point really he could have went for a counterattack and maybe killed this uh command center and end of the game but it looks like sock is going to be able to start mining again supplies are so so far apart though well killing that base was more crucial than i thought because we got a glimpse that bottom middle had like two probes mining that entire time so despite having tons of bases really not a lot of econ for shuttle he's going to be mining out his mineral only any second mid right's going to be mining out pretty soon and then he's going to be down to one base however the fact still remains that sock is down 100 supply and i mean three two is good but it's not that good yeah, I mean, you definitely need units to make use of upgrades, Nye, but... Well, looks like Shuttle is getting into position to attack here. He loses a couple of Zealots on the entry there, but it doesn't really matter. The Shuttle is going to drop Zealots on top of the tanks. One Storm! Oh, the Templar goes down before it casts anything, and actually these uh, Protoss units are quickly falling, but Terran units also, 50 supply for a Terran. This is all he has left. And it looks like Shuttle just has so many more units behind that. Yeah, this is going to be the end of Sox run in the ASL. He's going to tap out. GG. And Shuttle is going to move on. So today, we have two Protoss players making it out of Group D. And, uh, man, what a game to end it on. That was a, a real back and forth game. I'm actually really surprised at Sox build in general you know he delayed his third base for so long and then he never took a fourth base I mean he took a fourth base really late and somehow shuttle found a way in to bust it so just playing out of his mind making it out of this group I mean again I th personally I'm not too surprised this definitely would have been my second pick to make it out of the group shuttle always delivers you know, definitely an underrated player, but uh, up there with the Protoss Kings. Yeah, this definitely seemed like the expected result. However, Sock put up quite a fight. He looked really good uh, in this map particular, except just simply running out of money. Unfortunate for him, and he had a really killer opener versus Scan. Kind of let it slip in the mid game, but looked very strong in TVT too. So it is unfortunate that he is going to be knocked out. And of course, our foreign hope got knocked out. So that's a bit disappointing, but it is exciting because now we have more racial balance. I think most of the players so far have been Terran and Zergs making it out. Yeah, it is nice to have representation across the board. Of course, Shuttle getting interviewed. Well, you know, how did you feel about the game? Well, I don't know. I was, I was clenching my butt, ch butt cheeks the entire game. It was so close. I had no idea when I was going to win or not. Uh, but, uh, you know, I believed in my training and paid off. <laughs> yeah, I think he realizes that he got kind of lucky that Sock probably just ran out of money because that game went way longer than I was expecting, especially after he was sitting on the high ground and denied that third base for so long. Yeah, well... Time about the game, clearly. And uh, Shuttle laughing a bit because probably wasn't feeling too good about how he played that. I mean, it was a... You know, the players... I mean, for the spectators, it's always exciting, right? But when you have a game like that last game... You know for a fact that both the players are triggered. <laughs> They're just sitting there angrily playing. I can't believe I'm playing like this. Well, I think Shuttle looked pretty good, especially in the snow match. Like, that could have gone either way, but the PVT... Well, Eclipse was a bit different because he kind of just bulldozed Sock. However, this last game I am a bit worried that the game went on so long after such a strong opener so he does need 
I think a little bit more practice or more preparation going into the round of 16 because of course everybody there is going to be much harder to play against. You know, you've got all your seeds from the uh, from the last season, like for example, Rush is sitting there and waiting, Zero sitting there and waiting. So it's going to be very hard for him, I think, based on what we saw today, to go to round of eight. Yeah, round of 16 is going to be nuts. It is uh, a level above the round of 24, but still, this was a, a hard group, without a doubt, for Shuttle to make it out of. I mean, Scan and Sock are no joke. Uh, Scan probably in the best form he's ever been. Sock always, always a cont contender. So out of all, all the people he could have played, this was definitely, and I mean, Snow, you know, like this was a very hard group. So making it out is an impressive feat. But yeah, definitely more challenges ahead for Shuttle. But double Protoss making it out, Snow and Shuttle. Yeah, dude, what a day. Yeah, today was a really good day. Of course, Zerg player is not too happy about today because we didn't get to see any Zerg games. <laughs> but TVP and, and the TVT was fantastic. I'm trying to get a read on what Group E is going to be next time on Sunday. It's going to be Group E, Sharp, Gamo, Bisu, and Piano. So again, another two Terran players and just one Zerg and one Protoss. So I guess we need to be rooting for Bisu a little bit because right now there are mostly Terrans and Zergs, as I mentioned, but today with two getting out or two Protosses is getting out, they've kind of closed the racial uh, balance there. Now Bisu's looking for redemption because last season he got knocked out by JYJ and you know he's yeah. not happy about that performance. Well, JYJ is no joke. You know, definitely a really strong player himself, but uh, Bisu, yeah, has been kind of struggling to get back to his former self in terms of just the dominant Protoss player that we know him to be. But yeah, here are the results. Of course, Snow making it out in first place and Shuttle joining him just now. Some sick games, Snow versus Scan, that was awesome. The first Shuttle versus Sock game was a bit of a letdown, but the Shuttle versus Snow game was absolutely incredible. I think... Uh, you and not just that, but even the... Uh, actually, the mirror games today were pro probably by far the best games. Yeah, I was about to say that. I know everybody likes non-mirror matchups, but today, for sure, the best games by far were the PvP and the TVT. If you can only watch a couple games, make sure you watch them. They were, they were definitely very good, and we are getting a look at the balance so far. You can see Zerg at the top with five Terran superstars. Rush, Royal, Light, and JYJ. And then we've got pretty much the three best Protoss right now. The only one missing is Bisu. And that's simply because he hasn't played yet. He's going to be playing on <laughs> Sunday. And probably I would expect him to make it out. However, Sharp, Gamo, and Piano are pretty good. We know that Sharp is kind of slumping a little bit. So I'm curious who is like the favorite to make it out in second place. But I still think I would favor Sharp a little bit there. Definitely Sharp, yeah. Yeah, Group C and F. And F, we got Mini, Soso, a new guy, Mong, Miso. Mini should be favored too. I mean, there's going to be more Protosses coming in here for sure. Bisu and Mini should be getting out of their groups. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, there are definitely clear favorites in both of the groups. It's just a question of who's second. I think E is looking like Sharp. I could see Piano making it out. I think Gamo is the big time underdog there. And then Group F, as you mentioned, many. And then for me, it comes down to Mong or Miso. But of course, yeah. Soso has a bit of an advantage being a somewhat unknown, at least to us. Uh, maybe he can pull out something crazy and go deep and make it into the round of 16. Yeah, but today was a sick day, Dan. Uh, thanks for having me on to cast. You know, it was, it was uh, different from the uh, BSL, but uh, it's pretty dope. Yeah, it was fun. And I did enjoy it, and we are going to have Scan back next time. He will be casting me with on, uh, casting with me on Sunday. My biggest question for you before I go is, which one am I buying, Mihai? I can go to that convenience store in 30 seconds. The red, white one, dude. The white one? That's what I'm going for, the red, white? Yeah. The, the white one in the middle. Okay, I will ask for that. Yeah. The king. Yeah, I got to make Give sure it's the king. the white king. king. Yeah, I got to make All sure right, it's... That's fine. I got to make sure that it's the king. Yeah, I don't want to get the Prince one. I want I want the real deal. Yeah, the real hot six, the best of the best. Um, 
But yeah, dude, ASL season eleven is shaping up to be a six 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 tournament. Uh and uh we're only at the round of twenty four, right? So I mean and there's two more groups. After that there's the round of sixteen groups. Uh dude, it feels good to have ASL back. I wish that we could get a translation of into what into the rain is saying, because I feel like when he's seeing all this shuttle harassment, he must be thinking back to the old days, like, oh, I remember doing this. I remember punishing these Terran players with all this yeah. harassment. I'm sure he's just sitting there smiling. Uh, that's the exactly time. what he's doing. He's smiling and he's uh, he's like, yeah, I showed him this. I showed him this. <laughs> you think yeah, he's okay. fist pumping as he's probably like <laughs> fist pumping as like a zealot pom eviscerates a tank line or shuttle or a storm drop kills like the entire SCV line. I'm surprised. No, honestly, I think he's a bit like you. He's probably just checking his phone in the middle of the cast. He might. I'm I'm surprised <laughs> that a lot of uh, or that we just recently started seeing Stormtrop. You know, it was gone for like five years, and now it started to come back. Yeah. Crazy, right? But it is a six style. Well, I... And uh, it, it pretty much destroyed today. I mean, Shuttle used it to win both his games, so. Yeah, I can tell you that when I face it, I don't think it's a six style. I think oh. that I'm tired of seeing it. I want them to just go back to Arbiters or Carriers. It looks like this is going to wrap us up. Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember, next week we are going to be casting Group E with Scan. And if you listen to Artosis's stream earlier, it sounds like he's going to have his videos up on YouTube on the official Freaka channel pretty soon. So definitely check that out. And again, thank you so much, and we'll see you next week. Take care.